Welcome to the 20 Podcast. After the gig stories and before the gig music prep with everything in between. I'm your host, DJ Spider. DJ Spider. What's happening? Oh, bo, 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 bo. First and foremost, I got to tell you this podcast is brought to you by Beat Source. Big shout to my people at Beat Source, the team over there. If you don't know yet, BeatSource is the new digital music service for open format DJs. And if you have not been on there yet, go explore all the amazing music and curated playlists that we've got on there. We have music for your live streams, for your mixtapes, all this quarantine stuff. We got it. We got you locked in. Okay. We got acapellas, instrumentals, all that curated. So go peep it. BeatSource.com. And uh, yo, I feel pretty comfortable now. We're getting good at these quarantine podcasts, being away from the guest. I would not even be mad if I had to live my life like this for longer. <laughs> um, so today on the podcast, we doing it again. We got someone who has the skills to pay the bills, to quote the Beastie Boys. He's a super well-rounded DJ. He does everything from nightclubs, to bars, to private events, to touring with artists, to a million other things, DJing in stadiums, going all over the world. I'm gonna tell you about him. He was traveling the world up to the last second until we got shut down from this coronavirus, COVID-19. So I need you guys to welcome, give a big welcome to DJ Zo. What up, world? What up, DJ Spider? That's right. Welcome to the 20 podcast. DJ Zo, aka Zomano. That's if you want to find him online. <laughs> Zomano. Last Zomano. That's it, Hell baby. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yes, so because glad to have you on. Thing is bothering me, actually. Look so. at that. You should keep, have it spinning, have it not. Every week we get a new ba- crazy background. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, the arm up here is a natural resting position, you know? Yeah. So for the audio people, he has his arm resting on his turntable. And he was asking me before, does this look natural? I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> I have a mic stand, so I was like, what should I do with my arms? So right like, here. nothing right now is natural, so it doesn't matter. Anything we do is totally cool. I could just have, like, a computer on my head and, like, you know, whatever. I'm pantsless right now, so this is, you know, I like this. Yo, kind of I think we're all pantsless. <laughs> we, I got I got hand sanitizer ready. Already. <laughs> I'm six um, feet away from my screen, too, actually. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I think they just found out that you could get it through FaceTime yeah. if you talk, so be careful. But I got you. Uh, <laughs> yo, so thank you for being on. It's a 20 you, podcast. Yeah. We normally go through a few songs from the 20 playlist, which is an amazing playlist on Beat Source. Um, shout to Kid Spin for putting it together, but we're not doing that today. You can't hear the music that good on Zoom. I mean, I see people have been doing these beat battles and the sound is so horrible and there's still a lot of people really watching. Bad. Did you watch yeah, that uh, little John T. Payne one? Yeah. I mean, I watched almost that the whole tight. thing. It was was super tight. I mean, there's almost 300,000 people watching. Like, amazing. Like, just that in itself is so dope. And But the only thing with those beat battles, like, I see people talking shit. Some of the, like, super MPC 2000 super beat maker type people are like, this ain't a beat battle. This is just people playing hits. But at the same time, the sound is so bad that if you don't know... You have to know the hits. If you don't know it, it just sounds like weird sounds. Yeah, it's like a it's like a sound clash battle. Like right, like a real beat battle wouldn't work because it's not doing justice to the people's beats. I feel like. I think people are. Oh, this is probably a topic we'll discuss. But uh, when you go split stream, the sound quality on IG Live just goes to crap. I think. Yo, it goes to crap, and then it never goes back though. Yeah, once they leave, I notice it stays right. bad. So I've seen like people, oh, we bring them in the chat and they're DJing. It sounds great. And then they come back and it never goes back to normal. So that sucks. <laughs> what have you been streaming on? Have you gone on any uh, IG lives or Twitches or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I, I've done. I So I've been like staying up so late every night. So like my eyes are bleeding, trying to figure out the best way to do this Twitch stuff and learning like OBS and Streamlabs and everything. Um, I've done an IG live. I did one with my son because I'm stuck at oh, home. Oh, yeah, that was tight. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I so that. we did one called In the House. We're stuck in the house. My seven year old. He helped me pick a bunch of the songs. We had props. We went crazy. It was super fun. But I want to start doing some just DJ Spider type ones and get on Twitch and you know get into that. 
Um, Twitch is the wave because I've done a couple too, and I see Twitch is definitely the most friendly. Right. And then the interaction in the chat room is popping. Right. But I think I noticed that Twitch it has its own like culture. I think mainly because you know it's yes. a lot of gamers are on there and a totally. lot of like IRL in real life streamers. They have their yes. own thing going. So yeah, I made a mistake. We were we were going on Twitch on my boy's channel, and, yeah. and then uh, I called it like twitching and referred to them as twitchers, and oh, like no. like a big no no. They're like <laughs> they put the f like f f f f. You know. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> It's like calling San Francisco SF. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Frisco. You get oh yeah, Frisco. You get in big trouble. Um, that's that's crazy. No, I know. I mean, that's been the battle. I feel like among a lot of DJs and like people at home. Let us know what you think. But is that I tell all the DJs, yo, use Twitch because they have eased up the most on the restrictions from pulling you off. Yeah. The sound quality is the best. The interaction is the best. But I think the reaction from a lot of the DJs are they have to rebuild their whole following. Yeah. Um, yeah it's so that kind of sucks. Because IG, you know, really is where everyone is. Right. You're asking them to do an extra thing, download Twitch. Make it right. Easy. But so it might be for the best. Yeah. yeah. Because like the... Um, like I saw Scratch Bastard, he was doing YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram Live yesterday all at once. Oh, wow. And um, I think he's streaming from that website. It's lula.tv. Yeah, I think I saw that too, yeah. Yeah, and you could send it to all of it. But he got, and he had like one point something thousand uh, on YouTube Live. And it, it said, this has been stopped due to copyright issues in the middle oh, of wow. it. And then Twitch kept going and Instagram live, I think cuts you off here and there, yeah. but yeah, it's like just a matter of figuring it out, you know? And like, he has such a big following on YouTube that it was dope, but, and his Twitch had like 40 people compared to the thousands on everything else. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. We're just figuring I wonder it if out. like they, they, if someone at IG is like just watching every single live and say, okay, this person, you know, Michelle Obama is in there. Let's let this, let's let this uh, stream ride. Uh, That's what I'm one, wondering. Let's, let's cut this one. Right. Like, is D nice just like exempt and whitelisted yeah. from it? Or how does that work? I don't know. Maybe they're looking at it and say, oh, this is popping. Let's let's let it keep going. Right. Like, it's this is worth uh, us getting in trouble for. I mean, all of it is, is that those sites will get in trouble for you playing unauthorized music, I guess. Yeah. I've seen some people do some things, which I don't know if it really does anything, but they'll like pin a uh, thing and say, I do not own the rights to this music. Right. But that's pretty much the equivalent of those Facebook posts where it's like, you know, someone's like, I do not give permission <laughs> to the government to access, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't do anything yeah, about it. Yeah, I don't think that's doing shit, you know. Or it's like when you used to make mixtapes and just put promo only. Yeah. It was like, okay, what are you not going to get arrested? The FBI is not coming to your house now. Like, What if you do the whole mix and you just turn the key lock off and pitch it down like two? I saw people say that. Do, do the pitch down. Do, mm -hmm. you know, so many different things, you know. But I don't know. I think we're just all figuring it out. But it does make it hard to spend t tons of time setting up your whole stream if it's just going to get shut down. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I saw Chris Villa posting, oh, we, I got oh, all they, these strikes. Like got banned or something. Like yeah, that. they said they're going to ban his account. He created another one. So I don't even know. I mean, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep, you know, I'm going to work on it more. But I, I'm going to yeah. try to just focus on Twitch. Twitch seems fun, too, because I want to do like crowdsourced blends like i have like i found an acapella that had like 10 different dope instrumentals i want to talk to the crowd and have them oh you should edit this part send i yeah. saw mr carmack last night he had on his screen send samples to this email right now people were emailing him and he was dragging him in his ableton live oh, and putting awesome. him on and then the chat room was sending him the lyrics and he was singing it into a vocoder i was like this is amazing yeah kenny beats has a dope uh, twitch stream too and he does stuff like that Kenny Beats has probably the best one I've seen. Like, so organized and dope and interactive. And it's cool, too, because you can share the screen and then you can, like, have people call in. and Right. You know. I know. So, Twitch, I think, is the move. That's my advice. IG Live, YouTube, all that stuff, I'm sure it's cool. But um, they're, I don't know. You know, they'll crack down yeah. on you more at this point. I've only really used IG Live and uh, Twitch. And I'd say, you know, there's definitely more viewers on IG Live, but Twitch right. has been more fun and just interacting with all the fans and 
they've got their own cool little like subculture of you know right. terminology and everything that I, I I'm not really aware of and I know you know I yeah. know in a way I thought and all this crazy shit that's like I didn't even know about so it's kind of totally dope. yeah I, th- I was thinking like are they going to be pissed that the music people are trying to come into their world well I think I read something that Twitch and SoundCloud are are trying to partner up about something I don't know if that no they have- did it I I did it so if you have a SoundCloud Premiere or Pro account you send you fill out this form. And they send it to Twitch and they fast track your account to become an affiliate account right away. What Um, what happens when you become an affiliate account? um, Usually you have to have a certain amount of broadcast, certain amount of followers, certain amount of stream numbers to become an affiliate. And once you're an affiliate, you can start, I think, correct me if I'm wrong out there, but I think you can start accepting subscribers, which instead of people following your page, which you can do on the free they can subscribe, which I think you get paid off of. Oh, wow. Um, so I think to subscribe, it costs like $6 to buy a coin. You send that coin to them, mm-hmm. and then maybe they split it with Twitch. I don't know. I'm just learning. I but like I did- executives are just all scrambling because this is like a new landscape. So like, yeah. let's figure out whatever we can do. And Right. So this is all new. Right. Character. So I think you can donate. You can get donations. You can create a Discord channel. Like All these things you can do as an affiliate when before you could just stream kind of. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're learning as we go. It's a whole new job for us as DJs. 2020, I saw a tweet. It was like 2020 is about to be a movie. And it was like, yeah, I am legend. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like 20 movies all put together. It's like <laughs> pandemic contagion. I am legend. like, uh, I started watching one Truman of show. You know, I had to like turn it off. I was like, yo, this is kind of crazy. I know. I saw that's trending on Netflix. I'm like, I don't want to watch that right now. I'm living it. <laughs> Yeah, it's nuts. Um, all right. Well, yo, for our show, as things have been ch- uh, changing, we've been trying to adapt. And I thought um, that we should implement something before we start. Since we can't do the 20 playlist, we should do the quarantine quiz. All right. Let's do it. I like Are you it. open for this. I just I'm came ready. up. OK, I came up with just a few questions. If you will have any ideas off those and you want to quiz me back, I'm right. cool with it. But uh, all right, quarantine quiz. Here we go. Brrr, sound effects. I got nothing. Um, all right. During the quarantine, how many showers do you take <laughs> per week? <laughs> well, it's funny because <laughs> um, so we were texting before about like getting set up and everything. And then I was like, yes. yeah, I need a little time. I need to take my weekly shower, <laughs> which was kind of a joke, but kind of serious maybe it's kind of true maybe like uh, every day other day okay so you're gonna go every other day every other day all right so you do you you do about three to four showers a week i didn't take a shower yesterday okay i didn't either (laughs) (laughs) i've been wearing this sweatshirt too for like four days Yo, everybody has. I see everyone's live streams and Instagrams and they've had the same sweatshirt on. Like this podcast is the only thing that makes me change my sweatshirt because I'm like, okay, I got to record a new thing. Let's find it. Oh, I haven't worn this in a minute. (laughs) Yeah, All my like I was I did some other live streams and I I think I was wearing this as well. So (laughs) don't roast me, guys, in the comments. (laughs) There's no rules. And there's also no reason to buy shoes right now. I mean, when no one's been even wearing shoes, I don't think. Barefoot right now. You guys want to see my feet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see them. <laughs> Me too. How, I got socks. <laughs> I'm actually barefoot. So that's no for me. <laughs> we can see the smells emanating. I'm going to start a DJ OnlyFans for my feet. <laughs> <laughs> that might get big. That might get bigger than some people's Twitch and Instagram. That's the other funny thing is, yes, Instagram Live is dope. I think everybody should do it. And I'm not hating. And I love it all. But. Is it really worth it if you're Instagram living to two people? <laughs> like, yeah, I know. I log on these sometimes. There's two people or there's seven people. And I'm like, fuck. Then they see me and they'll be like, spider in the house. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, shit. They I'm like, and like, then I'll be like, sounds good. I'm actually going to watch a TV show or like <laughs> I'm club hopping right now. Like, uh, don't call me out. I wish it would show when I leave, too. You know, spider entered. Three seconds later, he's left. Because <laughs> that's what I do. I flip through them almost like I'm changing channels on my TV now. So well, sometimes Instagram will, will like log you into a. Live oh, I hate that. Like, what the hell? 
I'm like, no, I'm watching this weird rappers thing or, you That's know. That's why I've been really selective too with, with lives because, well, first of all, I'm afraid I, I'm not going to have a lot of people tune in, but I know strategically, you know, hopping on lives of like, I did one with LAFC. So that was like, yo, that, that was dope. The, yeah, the only, only thing is was I, that the, the sound. Dual, yeah. You know, I know. I mean, so no, your set was tight. I watched it. It was a great idea. I love the idea of collaborating with brands. But the sound was so bad. I think something happens when when you once you go into that dual screen, it disregards the Go Mixer Pro or the iRig. It just oh goes, no, it does. I tested that right. out because I tried to do a trivia thing during my set where I grab people in, and the second I would grab them in, it would kill my Go Mixer live. Any input. I wonder if there's any other devices besides iRig and the Go Mix Pro. Do you think that this is a thing for um, every single time it's split screen? Well, I think you got to use Lula TV. Oh, okay. The, the thing you're talking about, yeah. And it'll broadcast straight to your Instagram, and then you can do stuff like this. But then that eliminates other things. There's always a pro and con, I think. Um, but, yeah, it's funny. Like, it's almost like, damn, if there's not that many people watching me, and, I have a ch- and I'm not DJing in a bar for money for yeah. 20 people, then I should maybe be working on, like, a video or a mix or a wow. song or a beat I could sell yeah. after this, you know? Well, after that LAFC one, so actually, you know, shout out to the LAFC. Day. Oh, yeah. Huge you know, that shout. Was, that, was, that was fun. But I'm not going to lie. Afterwards, I was kind of discouraged because it sounded like the quality, sound quality was shit. So I was just like, uh, let me just go live on my regular one. And then that sound quality was like way better. And then on that one, I was just fucking around having some fun. Right. Oh, I, was, I caught I caught some of your one. on. It was you were killing it. You were like all over the place. Yeah, I like to jump around because, you know, when are you going to have a chance to really like play like that besides maybe like OTR bus or uh, right. 82 or something? You know? No, it was so fun. You were like playing up tempo disco type things and everything scratching like crazy. It was. Yeah, I was trying to yeah. I was I was like about to watch Tiger King with my wife and then. Uh, I was like watching your thing. She's like, come on. I'm like, oh, have you heard right. that Joe Exotic uh, song, Here Kitty Kitty? No. Bro, that one is a banger. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Here Kitty Yo, Kitty. You could have played it. <laughs> That's that tight. Was funny. Oh my God. I know. How many people are remixing Joe Exotic after this? I moved my arm down. I was getting, <laughs> I'm putting it over here now. <laughs> it's all good. Put it like this. Throat and bows. Um, all right, shoot. Our, our our quarantine quiz got killed. Okay, so quarantine yeah. quiz. Shout. How many showers a week? You're going with three going. to four. Three to four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we go four to five if we're counting a seven day week. Oh, uh, you're lying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. How about have you? <laughs> you're, so you're telling me you're staying with your girl, right? Yes, um, I am in quarantine over here. Have you changed your sheets yet? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but actually just this morning we were like we should change the sheets yeah me too we were like last week i was like yeah, i think we gotta change the sheets like and i have a kid too so i'm like okay i gotta change all i gotta do mad shit in my house like so yeah because i'm like how many people out there have just not changed their sheets the whole fucking time because also during quarantine i'm like fuck it let's eat in bed I'm like, right. fuck <laughs> there's no rules <laughs> All right, so all the listeners, please write us in, too. How many times have you guys changed your sheets and how many showers a week? All right, question three. Um, How many songs have you deleted or added from your Serato during this time? Oh, man. Um, Any organization? That is a very good question. Deleted. um, I I actually am pretty good about just keeping, you know, the songs that I need. Right. Besides maybe from, like, 2015 and before all of that is just like crazy but then everything right. after that i was kind of like taking a you know a step and like ah, i don't really need this one delete it so right. i'm not really a That's hoarder good. in that sense good um but then downloading new songs i probably added maybe like 400 300 or 400 new songs like uh the joe exotic you know got a couple versions of that you know <laughs> yes. and then uh dj city of course staying up on on dj city beat source right and, um what else uh oh i've been doing uh uh a twitch podcast it's probably something else to talk about but with, with yeah. my boy so i've been loading up on like all the sound effects you know so I, I probably downloaded like 50 new sound effects as well wait what do you mean uh but how does that apply in the twitch podcast oh because it's kind of a multimedia show like he'll he'll introduce it and then like 
we're just off the wall. Like I'll play like the Sanford and Sons theme song and he'll like come walking in and be like, hello. Blah, blah. And then I'll play like, and it'll kill the music and we're like, okay, we got a little update, update on sports. There's none. And then I'll put like, or I'll put like, a, Oh, I love that. You know, and so you guys do yeah. it fully in Twitch, like a TV show and then yeah, just put so it out we, like that. We do it every Friday at uh 5 PM. Yep. So like from on five, what, what channel, on, uh, uh, Twitch, dot tv slash dumbfounded live oh he, okay i gotta watch to, uh, tour with a lot the rapper from from la so dope a multimedia show he's pretty funny to stand up comedy also so it's oh, real man. entertaining we take calls and i roast the callers like they ask something stupid like you know i'll hit them with x files like illuminati <laughs> noise yes. or something or the oh dude SVB, that's amazing like, brum, brum. <laughs> Wow, I might have to take this show to that level if uh, we don't get back <laughs> to the office soon. <laughs> That's tight. That's super dope. And how do you take the calls? Like just on any Discord. They had, so so we make them download Discord, and uh, with Discord, then it can pop up on the screen. And we have an operator that's kind of running the Twitch, so he'll bring up the call up or uh, FaceTime. We you know we'll do a FaceTime and then stream it to uh, streamcast to to the to the green screen, which is behind him. So then. They're behind him on the green screen. Oh wow! So it's it's I I had nothing to do with the production. I just wait. What is it. Discord? We talked about it last week, and I was still trying to figure it out. It's, it's like a, its own chat room. I'm not too sure, but Discord is it's in cahoots with Twitch in some way, and that right. people want to call in that they have to call in on Discord. You know, and oh. uh, I think it's a queue. I don't know if you remember like Pal Talk back in the day. Like people would scratch on that. I think it's like you. You know, you go on the Discord, and then it's like, you know, oh, uh, DJ Zo wants to, you know, call in, then oh, DJ Spider wants to call in, and or JR wants to call in, oh. so they go in order, and then you know, and they, it's like a chat room that's connected yeah. to only that channel, right? Yeah. And then okay. Ask your question. Because I signed up on the Kenny Beats Discord, and then I'm just looking at it like, what the hell am I doing right now? <laughs> I think it's because there's a queue, maybe, and they're probably mad people, you know, were ahead of the queue. Oh, okay. I'm actually not too sure at all because I just right. stay behind the DJ during yeah. the whole time and the operators doing the Twitch. No, all Check good. <laughs> that's, that's, that's super dope though. Um, I got to peep that. All right. Del- what, about, Del- uh, what about your, what was the original question? How many have you deleted? And how many I don't even added? know. Oh, uh, dude, every night I'm like, yo, I'm going to sit down. Cause I am a hoarder. <laughs> I'm the worst of the worst. And I've been on Serato since like 2005. So my shit is just stacked with yeah. unneeded bullshit. Um, so I have just, all I've done is add, I've been trying to delete. And then I just, I honestly wait till too late to do it. And I start nodding off. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. I'm not even awake for this. So it's I need to sit and get it organized. Thing, right. To just be like, I need to do it. And they're like, ah, oh, I don't want to do it. It's yeah. It's like what I, I'd rather just work on a beat or make a mix or work on this or do a live stream. You know, sometimes I feel like, like your mental clarity, you, you can't relax until you, you know, under like realize, okay, all my crates are in order. At least I know for me sometimes, which no, is what right. I do during this this quarantine. Like, uh, pretty much what I like to do after gigs is like I know a lot of DJs do this too. Is just review the history and then drag it into like a separate crate, and then you could be like, you know, March seventeenth, Singapore, and then you'd be like, oh, okay, this is what I played, and then you could be like, oh, this worked, this didn't work. Yeah, and then I like to like put in the comments section like the next song maybe. But then my shit starts to look fucking nuts, you know. I know. <laughs> but then, it's good for searching and stuff. Yeah, it is good for searching. But one thing that I did do for uh, when I have doubles, I have like probably like 10 versions of Blow the Whistle. Yeah. I'll, I'll put like Blow the Whistle, this one. So then I'm like, right. oh, okay, this is the one to play. <laughs> but know? why don't you delete the other ones? I know, exactly. I should have <laughs> been doing that. <laughs> Um, I know I, I do, but I actually do that exact same thing. I put this one or best yeah. one, the best one or something. It's like and producers then, that are like final, 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 right. final, final, final version 8.5 <laughs> with vocals louder. I know. So that's interesting though. Any other like organization tips for your, for your Serato? Um, yeah, I've, I, I've lately like maybe in the past three years been kind of, uh, approaching it like venue based and vibe based. Right. So Yeah. I have like a whole crate that's like for Asia, you know, I'm like, Oh, these particular ones I can play when I, when I'm touring in Asia. And then I'll even reference some of my past gigs in there. Like for example, you know, the Singapore, say la vie that's yeah. a, over there. I'll, I'll, I'll drag that in there. 
And then I'll look at that history and like, I'll put like a color on, you know, particular joint that I noticed that work. And then I'll drag that into like the heavy hitter crate of Asia. Uh, right. And then kind of d- doing it vibe like that. And then like, you know, Vegas, get the Vegas stuff. Some of the Asia stuff works. Yeah. And then, like for lack of a better word, I have a, a crate called like alt club, which is going to be like, you know, Shania Twain and, Okay. You know, weird shit that I like that you can't necessarily play in like these big clubs, but right. So basically, my shit looks nuts. Like I only <laughs> understand the code. I even put emojis in some of them. Like, oh, the one with the emoji. Right. The, open that folder. <laughs> I know. No, everyone has their own method. I mean, I have the same thing. I like to approach it by the vibe, the club, the spot, like because it's so different. Yeah. You know, or if it's like the do over, like per per party, you know. Um. But then I get so, I have so many, I'm lost when I'm in my mix. I'm like, oh, I can't find anything. I want to almost search the playlist uh, more than the song sometimes. So another thing I noticed I've been doing is like maybe every six months, I'll just create a new crate and then I'll just start dragging shit at there, in there. Like, because I notice if I, if I play from the other crates, I'll be playing a lot of the same shit. Right. Then if I, if I start a new crate, you know, there can be like maybe this song from fucking you know, the eighties that I forgot about, or maybe the song from the two thousands that I forgot about. Right. And I'll put my, within that particular dump crate, I'll call it like, you know, March dumps new. And then like, there'd be a sub crate alt and then there'd be a salt sub crate, like Liddy. And then the sub crate, like, you know, banger loops. And then that way it gives me a fresh start. So I could DJ on my regular crates. And then I'm like, man, I'm playing the same shit. Oh, let me click on this new thing that I just, you know, yeah. created. Look here a little bit. Right, right, that right, right. Too little. No, that's dope. Yeah, it's just all about having your tools lined up, like yeah. to attack. You know, be able to like go in and, and not be some confused. People that don't even use crates, they just go off the top, like just yeah. All. Well, that I had DJ XL on here, and he gave this whole long uh, organization method, and it was with no crates. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I my brain doesn't work like that. Yeah, it was really interesting dynamics. Did a whole breakdown of his, then Excel did his, and then I had cut corners to talk about it from Serato. But I bet Matt is the most organized. No, you know? funny enough, he had the least to say about it. I mean, less out of the three of them, he had the least to say. Um, I'm sure he's very organized. He's a very <laughs> um, <laughs> organized dude. But like, it was, um, <laughs> yeah. But it, but but Excel was like crazy. He had like scientific methods. Um, but it yeah. just doesn't work for me. I need the crates. Mm-hmm. Like I'd rather go into this little crate and just work out of it, and then yeah. go out. You know, yeah. and if it's too much shit, I just get confused and it slows me down. It almost like paralyzes me in a way. Do you prepare like? Um, I mean, I not to prepare uh, pain. I use that right. also. But like, let's say like. So, for example, we were in Vegas together. We were DJing. Yeah. How much do you prepare for, you know, a gig like that? I always have this vision. Like, when I get booked, I have a vision like, oh, yeah. I'm going to prepare so much for this. And then somehow I'm like, oh, I'm DJing there tomorrow and I haven't even started yet. <laughs> um, but I try to prepare as much as possible. Like, either I'll do what you said. I'll go through older crates where I knew I had sections that worked in certain ways that might work in this club yeah. um, and then drag them into a thing. Or I like to just make one whole new thing of like from new songs or ones I forgot about stuff that I want to just play at this club. If I'm going to do on the record, it's going to be different than the yeah. Hakkasan hip hop night or then doing the do over than doing it's always different. Um, mm. And then I just, and now I've gotten in the habit of making one, Let's say I'm going to do on the record. I'll make a master crate for it. Then I'll make these sub crates underneath of like just in, who knows what's going to happen that night. You know, what's like your, what's your deepest sub crate? How many levels are we talking about? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, tr- I try to make as little as possible, but I'll just make like, you know, hip hop, big room, hip hop hitter type shit, you know, and then like, cl- like cl- up tempo stuff. But the stuff... Like I'm not gonna play like EDM type stuff at on the record. So, right. but I I still want to play up tempo. I'll play like Dombrowski, Soul yeah. Sacrifice, or oh, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. that version is tight with uh uh play that funky music. Have you heard that blend of those no. two? Oh, that one is dope. 
That's dope. Yeah, like, you know, just I go by the vibe of it. So whether no matter what tempo I'm playing, I'm going to play the right vibe for that spot. So just try to organize it like that. Like, okay, um, you know, that's it. And then make, okay, these are dope acapella loops that could work if I want to get in or out of things. Yeah. Oh, I want to hit go to 110 BPM and I can't get there. I'm just going to drop it and be like, you know. Right, right. Like, come I put on, those come in on, my holy it, shit crate. This is like, okay, you can get out of any situation. Right. So you, yeah, it's like the, the, you know, get out of jail card. Exactly. Crate. Like if you're playing the Shania Twain and it didn't work like you thought it would, yeah. then you're like, boom, here we go. Yeah. Fat man scoop, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it. I mean, I try to just be as organized as you can. My goal, though, is to get my thing just so organized that – I can hit any club, but it doesn't, it's just not work, man. You're going to have to, you're going to have to delete shit and might as well start new at that point. I know I want to, I, I keep trying a million different things. There's no good answer. I pretty much do start new, but then I just do it below. So I have like me too. Everything above is like, I kind of don't look at it, but then yeah, me too, but it's there. And then actually Matt from, uh, Serato cut corners showed me, you can delete them, delete the crates out of your computer so they don't load up but save them oh um, yeah so then you can you don't have to have them in there but i still haven't done that i've done that before when you accidentally delete a crate right and then you'd have to drag it back in yeah it's yeah but you can do it from the back end pull them all out and then only have your ones but like because i made like a 2020 these are all my songs i want to play in 2020 but then yep. i still keep going back to my old shit so i don't know i think this quarantine would be good because Everyone's going to reevaluate like their style and yep. they want to hear. And even even DJs that are wanting to play music right now and they don't have any opportunity except for to go on live. Like, you know, I mean, it depends on the DJ. But for me, I don't want to play like club records when I'm on live. I want to play like rare grooves and yeah. funky shit and shit that I want to hear in the car, shit that I just want to fuck around with. You know, I love I know. YG. I'm not going to play like YG album like on my live. You can listen to that on your Apple Music if you want, you know, like, right. Or, or I've seen people coming out with these schedules, which I'm not mad at. You know what I mean? It's like Friday night. Oh, we in the club. Yeah, yeah. Rare groove Mondays, you know, like, uh, work on Ableton with the crowd Tuesdays, you know, like stuff like that could work too. If, but, but same, cause I do get in the mode where I just want to play underground hip hop, but then I'm like, Shit, a lot of the same people that were in the club are out there still watching. Yeah. So that's true. So that, that happened, for example, we were, I was on Twitch last uh, Tuesday, um, on Friday when we did our Twitch. And yeah, then towards the end of the night, I do about an hour and a half of just mixing. Okay. Whereas before, I'd do 10 minutes here and there and just talk shit, sound effects. And then the end, right. I just close it out with mixes. Yeah. And I was busting through all these like old routines that I had from like, you know, 10 years ago, because I just wanted wanted to do them as I haven't done them in so long. Like right. you know, with like songs from no doubt and like Lenny Kravitz and shit like that, but like going dope in and out, like flowing through it for sure. And then some fucker on there was like, play some 2020 shit. And I just like, I was like, yo, you're on my Twitch right now. And I'm going <laughs> to play whatever the fuck I want to play. <laughs> I don't know why I got pissed. <laughs> I was like, if you want to catch me playing some new shit, like come back to you know Vegas when it opens up. We'll, I'll play yeah. it for you over there. But for now I'm playing, bob james so fuck off <laughs> <laughs> exactly but i mean that's the truth like we're here that, oh, that's shit, the I beauty you, spider oh okay yo yo oh i hear you yeah sorry oh you know what there's the beauty of running through s9 <laughs> it's because i i uh, didn't know what to do with my hand and i put the fader down and you're on you're on channel oh, that's one, amazing show, show oh show them how we got an echo going on here forever <laughs> <laughs> see we got we, we got real dj shit so, happening right now <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, who knows uh we were talking about yelling at people on your twitch oh, for no requests people, yeah <laughs> and then my boy afterwards was he does twitch the operator tony he's like man he's like just you get there's trolls he's like there's a lot of trolls like just right don't talk to them i, was like, I, I mean the same I trolls the same trolls shit. from the club that are like yo can you hear this song you know oh, man you know what uh i have some some like sound tech companies that are real like aggressive with that like uh in Singapore in say la vie the, the, someone did that the guy fucking shout out to Placo he, he works there he, he took his phone and he just put it behind the DJ and then just like left and walked over and then the guy was just looking like can I have my phone for like 20 minutes <laughs> that's amazing yeah, yeah it's like yo enough with the phone in the face <laughs> 
This is probably just going to make it worse, though. <laughs> they're going to now. Well, you know what? You just, <laughs> someone told me this. They're like, yeah, when they give you your phone, just open up like their Venmo and Venmo yourself like hundred dollars. Yo, yeah, that's I don't hilarious. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. And go song request. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Charge. Shit. It's like, yo, you made the request. That's uh, you know, it's just like going into a restaurant. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> All right, yeah, we're still in this quarantine quiz. Actually, the quarantine quiz is now leading to so many topics. I'm not mad at this. I, I, I thought we were going to bust through it, but this is great. Um, all right. Actually, my next question was what we were just talking about. Yeah. How many live streams do you watch a day? Mm. So let's see. I definitely click on all the homies stuff just yeah. to click, check it out. Support, it's been a lot, drop right? Some- emojis yeah i'd say maybe like three or four okay. a day um you know i don't know if i have add or what but it's it's like really hard for me to maybe because it's on the phone if it was on the computer or like right. on a tv or something like I, you know i don't want to be holding it the whole time yeah like maybe my endurance is I'm, I'm like five minutes in alive and then right I'll look on twitter i know and then, I'll there, and then i'll go to the fridge and then I'll open up the live again i'm like oh let's see what Okay. <laughs> I know. I left my phone in the fridge and I couldn't figure out what was happening. <laughs> like I was watching Vice like DJ live and I was like walking around. That's the beauty of live stream. I don't have to use a club bathroom. I get my own bathroom and I get to go eat like hummus and blueberries in the middle of a club set. But like I go in, I'm like eating out of my fridge the middle of the night and then I close the fridge. And I'm like, yo, the music stopped. But like I hear it and I'm like looking around I'm like, where is my shit? And then I open the fridge and like the music comes out. And I'm like, oh, I just straight up refrigerated my phone and the live stream. It was too hot. You had to cool it down. <laughs> yeah, to cool that shit down. But but same, like the longest stream I've left on, I think, was I, I put it like through my Sonos. Like I connected the output of my phone and just left like D nice playing while like I did some shit with my son. Yeah. And it was kind of nice just to have. He was playing family friendly jams. Does he go um, directly into the iPhone or he just goes out the speaker? No, I mean, I think he's he's had his phone just right in front of the speaker. But then I noticed oh, okay. on one of them, he, he did do the direct. And um, then halfway through, it stopped. And you could tell it got all echoey. And I could tell he thought he was doing direct because he's talking in the mic, but it wasn't really working. Oh, uh, that's another problem with like, yeah, with IG Live is that. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. So that's that's exactly what happened uh, when I did the uh, the stream in FC. Yeah, uh, I thought it was going through the whole time, right? So I'm like, I'm on the mic. I'm like, Yo, Kenny, how's it, Kenny, how's it sound? Right. And then like, but they're not hearing the mic. They're just hearing. No, they hear this egg. It's like, hey, how's it yeah. going? Oh, and it's like, oh, well, and you're like, yo, it's not working, dude. But he's saying it sounds like shit, and I'm like, oh, it sounds like shit, and like they can hear me like talking <laughs> shit. And then he's like say anything <laughs> what you know don't speak it to the mic he's like no everything you're saying like, <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me too like a couple days ago i was trying to do this live set for blind barber and i was like oh it's recording everything i'm saying like oh god <laughs> yeah not good we're, we're learning we're learning as we go yeah um and yo wait and so the lafc thing do you dj at their games and stuff or what's your no, connection um well i work with adidas sometimes hey, oh good. okay Hey, and, uh, yeah, so they they uh, plugged me through there, but um, it was just a a new thing that they're. I, mean, I guess everybody wants DJs to yeah. go on, so it right. was just a new thing. I think the week before they had DJ Charisma and uh, oh, okay. Jay Sinatra, and right? And they week, do their they, games, I think, or something. I believe so. Yeah. Um, oh. So you know, it was just just for fun. Through right. A mutual homie Ben, shout out Ben. What's up? What with up, Ben? Tickets? <laughs> yeah, we'll see when it comes back. I got tickets to go in September. We'll see if it's back. September 2021. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, I know. My kid is like so into it, so I take him to the games, LAFC, but it's no. uh who knows when that shit'll start. Yeah, I see on your stories your kid's like a superstar, man. Basketball, yeah, like I soccer. Know. Yeah, he is. Everything. We've been training at home. We do this thing called technique training and he he killed me yesterday like and we played a soccer game but he trains does all these things he goes up against other kids sends in videos and juggling the ball and stuff has so, he tried djing does he like it yeah i mean yeah he like well from the live stream he's like addicted now every day he's like let's go again let's do live stream <laughs> how many people are watching on instagram i'm like oh god what did i start um <laughs> 
but That's yeah, I mean, to think about like how the, the you know growing up in an Instagram yeah. era or like how this might affect kids, like the amount of views you get or something like that. No, he's like, how many are on? How many wrote? How many people watched it? How many people are commenting? I'm like, oh god. <laughs> It's crazy. But yeah, he, you know, he DJed on there. He can do little things. I show him stuff, but he's not as interested like as, um, as soccer. Like okay. he'll practice soccer for like eight hours and like he keeps going. He never wants to stop. <laughs> it's like I was with DJing, but with the DJing, it's not as much, but yeah. you know, I let him do his thing. I bought him a drum set. We do whatever. I try to, I'll give him the opportunity, and then if he wants to do it, I'm here <laughs> for him. If not, I'm not so, yeah. going to be pushy, Dad. It's all good. Um, but, cool. yeah. Yo, all right. So, live streams a day. You get you do a few. I've noticed I do a million. I was trying to learn from them, too. But I'll go on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram. I'll flip through them. And, and, but it's hard. Like you said, with the family, I can't just be on my phone watching all the time right. and stuff. Yeah. I need to on-demand that shit. I definitely have, like, watched, like, every single story there was one day where i was like i, I wanted to see if i can watch every single story oh my so god so i was just like tut, 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 tut. <laughs> and i did it i accomplished it <laughs> <laughs> that's a huge accomplishment yeah was like, um, Fuck it, let's try it. <laughs> that's so funny dude and so how many so part of the quarantine quiz how many live streams have you done so far let's see i did um i've done one on my own personal account i did one on lock and key um oh, oh i saw that that was dope yeah, that's two i've done two i've done three twitches with dumbfounded and i've done a uh lafc one so six i've done six maybe I've done, oh and i did arena on twitch which is seven i've done quite a bit actually yeah wow and i'm doing one on wednesday park mgm Tune in 8 p.m. 8 p.m. All right, this comes out uh, before that, so yeah. if you guys are listening on Wednesday, the April something. <laughs> yep. That's uh, it. Tune in that night, Park MGM. Tune in that night. Yeah, and then hopefully you don't get shut easy. down. Yeah, hopefully. Um, dope. All right, quarantine quiz. I think this is the last question I could think of. Um, how many times? How many times a day do you open your fridge? <laughs> well right now i'm staying in my girl's house and she she's stocked up like on mad stuff so i open it quite a bit <laughs> <laughs> all right me too i open it like a thousand times a day sometimes yeah. i don't i just open it i don't even know what i'm doing like i just go in there it's open i look at everything i'm like all right peace out like, yeah. <laughs> i don't even eat it or drink anything it was like week one it's like all right i'll try and be healthy a little bit and then oh, yeah week, week two i was like ah oh, fuck it let's i'm gonna eat this and then what is this week? Whatever. I don't know. Week I don't even know. I think we're going into week four, right? I did try a thing though for about a week and it didn't really last that long. Cause it's very hard, but I tried to drink a gallon of water a day. Oh, it's so hard, but it's a good place to do it. Cause you can go take a piss anytime. Yeah. And notice I was like taking like 20 pisses. I was like, all right, I'm going to stop this. I've been drinking less gallon. water than ever in my life. I don't know why I keep noticing. I'm like, damn, did I even drink water today? Like <laughs> my eating's all messed up. It's, it's definitely not good. The yeah. health thing too. Like we were like eating like earth balance and like not butter. And then now we're literally just putting like whole sticks of butter into like things yeah. and just doing yeah. anything. I was just cooking. Well, uh, because for me, like that's also why I'm quarantining over here. I, I, I'm not really a great cook. I don't really know how no. to cook anything so me either i'm learning but i don't know shit and I, I was at my house and then i was like shit I, uh, I pretty much order food all the time my fridge is barren i know and uh, there was nothing except for like this old dusty can of spam and i was like i wonder how long that's been there and i cooked <laughs> it up <laughs> and then the oh next day God. i was like you know what let me go to my girl's house in quarantine because a uh, good idea <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, good idea. I know. No, dude, that I wrote that on Twitter. I think how many things have you found that have expired from three years ago? And you were like, I cooked up this spam. So many people are writing me because I'm finding shit. I'm like, yo, I found all this frozen fruit I didn't know I had. And I look, it was like throw away by 2018. I'm like, yo, it's frozen fruit. I didn't know that even goes bad. I even drank that random Swiss miss like random one single pouch. I was like, well, let's get this chocolate milk popping. <laughs> Yo, everybody has that one Swiss Miss pouch. 
I was like 15. Oh, yeah. I found uh, like bags of tea. I was like, yo, we're going to make tea. And then I look, it expired like five years ago. I'm like, I didn't even know that could happen. Like what, what, where has all this shit been, dude? There's shit like spices. Cause I was trying to cook too. I'm like, oh, yo, I got oregano. I'm like, oh, maybe not. It's like just dust <laughs> in a jar. I'm just sprinkling dust straight onto my shit. <laughs> um, Yes. All right. That's a good question, too. How many things have you found? So you found your spam. Yeah. Um, all right. I don't know any other Corona question. I mean, uh, quarantine quiz questions. Um, yeah, what but, about you? Uh, one thing I've been doing, I've been taking my dog has been loving it. I've been taking her for like hour long walks. Yeah. And so that's a, that's a Corona thing. I guess. Yeah. How I many know. walks? I know. Well, we were doing that, too. Like we were taking walks every day and because my son, too, needs to get out and my dog. But then that shit started feeling weird. Now they're like, wear the mask when you go out and walk. And yeah, I'm like, you wear the mask when you go out. Well, no, I mean, if I go to a, I haven't, but like in the past few days when I had to go to the store, I wore a real mask yeah, and yeah. the gloves. But then we went out for a walk and we put like dinner napkins over our face. Like we couldn't yeah. find anything. We were like the bandits, like with over <laughs> our face. But then it's so hard. He doesn't want to wear it. And where we live, there's not very many people. So we were just like, if somebody was walking towards us, we went on the other side of the street. It was all good. I yeah. want to be part of the cause and wear the face thing, but it's hard. Like we ordered some shit. So hopefully those come and they're more yeah. comfortable and better. But tough. I know, you know, but yeah, I want to take my dog out more. And this rain's been crazy. It's been raining for like a yeah, week at I know, a time, I know. which has never happened here. <laughs> so shit's fucked up. Like let's get <laughs> shit on times two. Yeah. So that's not helping. But the walking, you're right. I've been walking yeah. more than ever in my life. Um, All right. Well, Corona quiz. It's been it, it was it was a success. Um, Every right, time I hear coronavirus, well, not anymore, but maybe like last week, I just hear Cardi B's voice in my head. Like, coronavirus! <laughs> can't get it out. I know. Shout to that dude, I Marquis. Like, he's insane. He, with that. Yeah. And now he has like a real song with Cardi B that's out, like charting, getting money. <laughs> I, I wonder how many DJs are going to have that in their sampler, like after this is done. Just I know. Well, wait, I did the episode I did with Craze. It was right before all this popped off. So we were talking about so much stuff. And I did this whole thing and I was like, fuck the coronavirus. And, and uh, someone we made, made yeah, yeah, yeah saw, someone yeah. made a whole thing out of it. And was and this DJ in India was scratching it. I'm like, this is amazing nope. right now. So that's dope. the power of this podcast. Universal, it really baby. is. It's awesome. Yes. And that's the thing. We're all in this together, guys, wherever you're listening from, like all the shouts we've gotten from like all over the world. Someone wrote me today and he was like, yo, uh, I'm a, I'm a DJ and a psychologist or, or a psychiatrist. And I'm like, that's crazy. And I'm in Ireland. And he's like, I would be happy to come on and uh, talk about the like psychological ramifications because I was talking about that with scene. And I'm like, all right, might have to have you on. Let's see. I want to find his message. Yeah, he goes, I'm a doctor of psychiatry and a DJ. Don't ask me how I combine both worlds. And I'm a regular listener. So I'm like, all right, might have to have him on talk about because I mean, I've been saying how this is going to affect people like from my kid to us to everything like in some weird way. Just being inside this long, what does that do to a human yeah. being that's like social, you know? That would be good to get like a bunch of those, the requests, and then you could do a Discord and like get, get four of them, you know, like you get this specialist and this field and this guy. Yeah, that's a good idea. Instead of having a full segment. Yeah, anyway. that's <laughs> true. I'm going to look at, well, I got to learn Discord yeah. before I do that, I guess. <laughs> um but yeah you're right that would be dope um i'm gonna look into that but yeah i wanted to have him on tell us tell us what's up um well so uh you know we've been i don't want to yeah, be I'm sorry if i just been rambling I just, no I need no the human interaction so we're, just, <laughs> we're like please touch me please. through the <laughs> Listen to me. i need the feeling of your voice and the your breath um, <laughs> yes, I need that cool DJ red alert echo. <laughs> I always like the echo on here. It's not like you know BPM bass. It's, it's just, just like, like a dub, 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 dub. Echo, 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 echo. I think you're doing it. I think it's creating. It's going up by timing, right? Yeah, it's cool. I love it. 
<laughs> I know. I was using it on my stream. I was like doing drops. I'm like, ah, DJ Spider. <laughs> the thing um, though that I don't like about the S9 versus like uh, yeah. uh, the 900 is you can assign like effects to the mic channel, which is right. cool. 62 yeah. had that too, which was dope. I know. Uh, I don't like, and sometimes if you don't know that echo thing is there, yeah, it gets fuck. it fucks up. You know, like you're like, why am I echoing? This is all messed up. Um, well, so we've been, you know, talking about the quarantine quiz. I'm not trying to, you know, the whole time talk about, uh, yeah, Corona, but that was something I wanted to talk about in the beginning, yeah. um, that how it's just affecting everyone, obviously right. like every industry, but yeah. DJs, I mean, it's insane how much it affects us. Cause our literal job is to get as many people together as possible and yeah. get them to all do the same things together. So it's it's crazy it's killing us obviously um and i'm sure it's messing up your whole life yeah like, um it was supposed to be in uh, like bali maybe last week or two weeks ago in korea nuts. i had a whole thing indonesia run set up it's crazy and so that's nuts that's what i was gonna say is that, like i saw like as this was popping off like you were one of the last people i saw that was traveling to asia back and forth oh man i got out of the way like i think i was probably one of the last people for sure one of your last trips i was like what is this fool doing oh my yeah. god like you were going to korea and all these places and i'm like is he not watching the news like you're the <laughs> only person on the airplane you like, know what i was I, yeah, I was so i was going to uh i think like by the end of february i took like 20 flights or something i'm and then towards the very end, oh, yeah, I went to Korea twice. I went to Vietnam twice. Oh my god, uh, Thailand, and then the la and then that was kind of before it started to go crazy. So exactly, I remember exactly what happened. I was in Vegas. Uh, it was like a Sunday. I forget when it was, but you know, Eddie Mac sets up a little Vegas run for me, so I do a week in Vegas. And then it was Sunday, and I was uh, going to go to Korea because I had to DJ and uh, over there, like with uh, with Hood Boy on uh, Thursday, right? Thursday. So I got to the airport and then I'm, I'm looking at my phone and it's like Korea, 30 cases of coronavirus, you know, and then I'm in, I'm in the uh, McCarran airport. I'm like, uh, it should be all right. 30 is okay. Right. So then I get on the plane <laughs> and then I land and then I look at the thing again when I land and it's like Korea, 900 cases of coronavirus. Oh my like, God. Oh, shit. So then, you know, I was with my buddy. We called up, the, we hit up the venue and they're like, yeah, we're going to postpone it anyway. And then I went literally as soon as I landed, I went to the Korean air kiosk. I was like, Hey, uh, what is the next flight back? <laughs> back. <laughs> Just and right when you like, got there. Yeah. Right when I got there, they're like, Oh, it's in the morning. So I was like, all right, cool. Let me get that flight. So wow. then they changed it for free. At so least you I got your miles. <laughs> and I went, yeah, that's right. So I went right back and then I intended to stay back cause it was starting to get, Oh, so I think Korea and U.S. they had the first cases around the same time. Right. So, you know, I got I, I felt like when I was going to Korea, it was a danger zone. I felt like scared because of all the yeah. press and you know all the, the news on it and everything and the amount of cases they were reporting. So like, okay, I'm back. You know, in the U.S., yeah. I'm safe. Um, and then I had another because because from that Korea run. I was supposed to continue. I was supposed to go Singapore and then like Bali and you know, whatever. But right. I could not cancel the, uh, the Singapore one because it was something that was, you know, in works for a very long time. And I, I could have, but, but the, you know, the person that I'm working with, shout out to my boy Toshi. He was like, yeah, it, it, it might will ruin you, you. You might not ever be able to play like again, if you do it. And he kept on assuring me, he's like, Singapore is, is safe. You know, I'm looking and I'm looking and I see the case. It's like 70 cases, 50 cases. So I'm like, okay, I've been to Singapore before also. It's very, you know, contained country, very right. organized. So I'm like, okay, yeah. should be okay. So I booked um, a flight actually the next day. My, I, like when I landed, I booked a flight for like two days later. Uh, it was super cheap. It was like $700 because no one wanted to fly. Yeah. And there was only like 20 people on my flight. <laughs> and then, you know, when I got there, uh, like I spent one day in Singapore and um, I did the show at C'est La Vie, which is on top of that Marina Bay Sands hotel, which is the big like ship. 
Yeah. In the, the, it's in the movie uh, Crazy Rich Asians. I did that, and then I was going to go back the next day, and my, but my boy in Vietnam was like, yo, you want to come and play the club here? And I'm looking because all we know is like the information that's on the internet. So yeah, I'm just looking at numbers and I'm like, okay, well, the amount of cases in you know, Vietnam and Singapore, it's quite low. It should be, you know, okay. Right. So I was like, all right. So I just, I called the, the flight again. I was like, let me push my flight back like a few more days. I'm going to do this Vietnam show. Uh-huh. So then I did that and um, I'm noticing like, all the precautions that they're taking in Asia, because I was, I was touring also before that in January and February and, and Corona was already, you know, something that was going on. Yeah. And I was noticing precautions that they were taking to, which was maybe why I was so contained. Like when you go, when you check into the hotel, they take your temperature, you know, when you right. get off of the airplane, you go through the temperature scanner. When you go to the club, they take your temperature, you know, all these precautions. And I even went to Italy in January too, as well. And, um, you know, I'm noticing that they take, well, Italy did not take precautions. That's why they're right. And they're, same here. Yeah. And same here. Like, but why they, are they not doing the, the temperature thing everywhere? And then every single time I came back, I, I would always be worried because it would be like February 15th and excuse me, I'm coming back from Thailand and I'm looking, I'm like, yo, am I going to be quarantined at the border of the, of us? Yeah, like, right. This is rumors. Everyone's like, yo, come back now, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like all worried. And then every, I have global entry. And then literally it took me like four minutes, five minutes. I'm like, no, there was wow. no problem at all. Yeah. And that happened every single time when I came back from Italy, when I came back from like Thailand, Singapore, Crazy. Korea. Wow. So, you know, that, I definitely was it. seeing them taking precautions in Asia and then coming back and seeing And then nothing. Not and they were warning out. everyone. It's so crazy. Like, we're lucky that the thing shows a fever and we could do that. Why do they not take advantage of that here? It's yeah. so crazy. I mean, it's not, nothing to joke about. It's, it's very serious, but like, man, I thought I, I, I was telling people and it's like, I think I had it like maybe in January or February and I got over it because. I mean, you were everywhere that it was huge. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so like maybe they should study my immune system or something. I don't well, know. <laughs> yo, I heard that they're, that they're about to come out with this thing. I hope it's true. Um, that, uh, they're going to hopefully, um, you'll be able to prick your finger I don't know if they send it to your house and they test the, the blood out of your finger and see if you have the antibodies for it. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so dope. they'll know if, cause so many people had it and they didn't even know. So they'll know if you already had it. And then maybe if everyone starts to go back out, they'll know if you're more immune to it yeah. than other people or something. Well, I'm, I'm definitely not really qualified to talk about the subject, but just having visited all those places yeah. before I could tell you, uh, I think I can understand why they're more successful in, in controlling and uh, containing because, you know, the fact that we live in the USA, we've got our amendment rights. So like, right, right. there's no, there's no way that, you know, we're going to be able to do what Korea did or what, you know, right. China or Hong Kong did because they, they pretty like in Thailand, for example, my boy, DJ tracks from sugar club, Phuket, shout out to him. He had coronavirus. He got sick. So I'm looking at his story. They quarantine you in a separate hospital, you know, and, right. and they send a text message to like everybody that's in the area. A person that has coronavirus has been in this area in the past 24 hours, you know, and, wow. and other things they're doing in China is they're giving like, um, you know, a bracelet that shows like a, you know, like a house arrest anklet or something. Right. So those are the type of things that they're using to contain it. Whereas over here, we've got our amendment rights and, you know, U.S. citizens will flip out like, what the fuck you mean? I can't, you, you're going to track my cell phone, you know, where I'm going. Right. Yeah. And everyone's but, buying guns nonstop because they already are thinking it's going down, you know, yeah, like so that. It's going to be very difficult, I think, to, in my opinion, to contain because we're not able to do those measures that those places in, you know, Asia have been doing. Right. And people are just idiots. Like everyone's like, it's it's because of cell phone signals or something. I'm like, yo, yeah. how are you that stupid? Even some of my homies, shout out to my, to my boy Sam. I love you, but man, he would text me. He's like, what are you gonna do tonight? I'm like, motherfucker, I'm staying home, which is what you should be doing too. <laughs> Don't ask me what I'm doing tonight. That's crazy. <laughs> like, just chill for a minute. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, that's nuts. Um, so you, you know, that's what I was going to say. You, you saw it creeping into society. I think you just gave us a good yeah. rundown of how that was, you know. I was doing crazy shit on the plane, though. I definitely wore, like, a mask the whole, like, starting from the end of January. I wore, I wore a mask, which is very hard to breathe on, like, a 14-hour flight. I know. And then, like, I was doing even crazier shit because someone told me on Instagram, they're like, take Neosporin and, like, rub it inside your nostrils so all the air that you breathe, like, gets killed before. So oh I was my doing God. that. Like, <laughs> that can't be real, but it sounds all right. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. I'm all right right now. So I mean, yeah, you maybe. Help. Well, you also said you thought you had it. That's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Whatever. I'm glad you're good. I'm glad yeah. you're here. That's all that matters. You know, Anthony told me when I was about to do that tour, he was like, you should go and you should get coronavirus and get really sick and then recover so you can be on Spider's podcast and talk about your recovery. Well, and now we're here. <laughs> Except you don't know if you had it or not. Why? You really think you were sick for like two or three weeks and felt like no, that? No, I was... I mean, honestly, uh, I probably ate something bad. I just had like <laughs> shitty bout. I was like diarying for like mad days. <laughs> uh, you're probably good. I mean, I think everyone has thought they've had it by this point. Like yeah. I've had so many mornings where I wake up. I'm like, oh, that's it. I got it. And then I'm like, oh, shit, I just need to drink water real quick. <laughs> Even when they like uh, would check my temperature when I'm checking in, like to the hotels when I was in Asia, I was like, oh, fuck, I hope I have a good temperature. And like, I know. You're good. I'm like, Phew. all right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> they need those things here, dude. Just yeah. pff, everybody. That's that's nuts. Um, what? Uh, so, I mean, that's insane. And so, obviously, it's been affecting everyone. It's killed all of our gigs. Um, yeah. Is that the main way that it's affected you? Is there anything else that's changed um, about your life? Yeah, it definitely has killed my gigs. I mean, I'm trying to find the silver lining in all of it, which is, I guess, like, I, you know revisiting some of these old tunes revisiting some music like getting back on ableton yeah fucking around um it's reminding me of kind of like maybe 10 years ago when when um me and my buddies started this thing called a knock steady which was kind of like just us like fucking around on youtube and you know making the most of what we had which was nothing just like scratching and rapping right was, yeah yeah so it's kind of giving me this kind of feeling of like the creativity is going a little bit, but then some days I'll wake up and, and you know, if you put that agenda on yourself, like, Oh, today I must make a mix. I must go live or I must prep, you know, figure yeah. out this three click flare. Then it's, it seems daunting. Right. And then I read right. like, you don't want to do it. And then I read something that was like, you know, you know, every day that you don't have to be productive, take it. It affects everybody differently. Yeah, exactly. Like everyone's doing different stuff. We're just trying to stay alive and get toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> How many toilet papers do you have? <laughs> I think I got like four rolls left, dude. I know, and, now they're like a couple. So I, I need know. to be up. It's crazy. I can't, I still can't get wipes, cleaning solution, paper towels, toilet paper, a bunch of shit. I'm like, when is this going to come back? <laughs> hey, oh, in the stores, you can't find it? No, I mean, at least online ordering. Yeah, I, well, I know I got to just wake up early and go, but yeah. it's crazy. Like Amazon, just make a whole section only dedicated to that or something. I think Amazon's uh, having problems too because some of the workers yeah. had it, right? They were, they were. Right. And their shipping's all late. Yeah, whatever. It's crazy. I know you were in Vegas a ton um, but right before this, and so oh, yeah, you're going to yeah. do the Park MGM thing this, this Wednesday. Wednesday, yep. Yeah. Um, and like, we don't even know when Vegas is going to come even back. Know, yeah. We had a great night in Vegas. We were there. Uh, Anderson pack was performing. Spider was in the main room. I was in the, uh, bus outside. It so much dope. fun. That was dope. Dude, that was such a dope night. I had like the best time ever. I, I felt like that was one of my best sets at on the record. Just like oh, yeah. feeling wise, like it felt so much fun. Yeah. And I was like opening for Anderson in a way, you know, I was like, all right, I want to yeah. set him up to just be super good and. <laughs> I remember though, towards the end, I was like, you were still there. And you were like, oh, shit, like, I forgot like, about Milo that. Le Milo left me. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Yo, shout out to Mighty Mai. <laughs> I was like, why are you still here? You're like, Milo took off. Yo, I DJed till like five in the morning. What happened? And I forgot I about all that. It, that night went from the best to the, the worst. <laughs> I looked at you. You look, Spider looks so pissed. Like, oh, I was like, what am I doing right Milo now? Left like, me. <laughs> 
It was crazy. I DJed like 10 hours. It was nuts. So that night, the beginning part was good. The end, I was like, get me out of here. This is too much. That's the thing with Vegas. There's no ending. That's true. Yeah. It just like, just goes. Which, I mean, I miss Vegas. I was just thinking about it the other day. I, I really miss it. I know. But. I know. It'll, the silver lining is we won't take a lot of things for granted, I guess, after this, you know, just yeah. all that, you know, but uh, it'll all come back. We'll all be back in there, but it, you know, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe they'll have to everyone wear masks and take the temperatures or they're going to do something because, man, I, like I was reading even uh, Hong Kong said that um, yeah. I have homies that own clubs out there. And I said the second wave of coronavirus is causing closures in nightlife. I saw that they just opened up like barely a couple of weeks ago. Now close it down again. So, And I got people hitting me now like we want to book you May 2nd, like all this stuff. And I'm like are you sure? Like, and they're like, yeah, it's over April 30th. And I'm like, but I don't think that you just go right to a club the next day, you know, like, yeah. cause I think they're going to have to stagger it to coming back. And there's so many things. I mean, but I guess people have to keep going and trying to hit the dates by the marks. And then we'll just keep pushing back if we need to. Nothing's canceled. Everything's just postponed. Unless there's some really surefire way, like at the door, they hand out masks and gloves to everybody. And then, yeah. Like, but then what? You're drinking through a mask? Drinks come in a vial and you like yeah. snort it. Or I don't know. <laughs> you can't, you can't take the mask off. Like, Right. I don't know, man. It's going to affect nightlife. It's going to affect yeah. everything. Like every it industry really is going to be affected. Restaurant industry. Oh, yeah. No. It's nuts. Um, so what? So on the live stream setup, like what's your live stream setup right now when you do it from where you are? Um, well... Right now I'm at my girl's crib, which I have my secondary set up here, which is okay. uh, just the text and the uh, S9. But you have another spot you were doing live streams from, yeah, so right? At that, at that place, I have another S9 and uh, and one uh, CDJ uh, 2000 Nexus 2 because I'm lazy. I don't want to bring, like, rather than own a controller, I'd rather have just, I'd rather, well, I do own a couple of controllers, but it's much simpler for me to just have an S9 and then, uh, a one CDJ and just got it. Instant double and drag it because right. I don't. I'm not uh, no hate to controllers, but I, I used to use them a lot. But I just it's it's kind of no, weird. I, I feel you. For me. Yeah. You know? No. No. It makes sense. Um, I've been you've been practicing a lot on the CDJs too. Yeah, I've been trying to just force myself to practice on them just because I want to have that comfortable feeling. Yeah. Of the same way I am on turntables. I know it's possible. Um, oh yeah, it's definitely possible. That's what I did too. Because um, so oh, shout out to uh, our mutual homie uh, Jr. Djr. Yeah, we did a a video together for Pioneer maybe like two and a half, three years ago. Oh yeah, and then through that yeah through that video they gave us some gear and they gave me uh, me like nine hundred and um, yeah Nexus two and then the CDJs. Oh dope. And then I just had it sitting for a while and then I was like, yo, let me just make this my main setup and familiarize myself. So like. Right. You know, for the past like year and a half, two years, like that's all I've been practicing on. And then actually since I came here to the quarantine, like I just started practicing with turntables again. So, you know. Oh, dope. Really yeah. Cool. That, that's, I've just been forcing myself to do it. You know, like you just, it, it's just like anything. You just have to get the yeah. feeling, you know, the, the thing yeah. of it. How long did it take you to feel comfortable scratching on CDJs or controller? It took me about a year to really be like, I can, I can kill it on these things. But like, right. Um, mixing was way quicker, like two months, you know? Yeah. Mixing I, is better. I, I do it. I do it differently. I don't, you know, a lot of people nudge here, but like right. I've got kind of fat fingers on the CDJ. So I'll accidentally nudge the top. That, I hate that. It happens to me too. So I'll click the CDJ button and then I'll, I'll scrub through it like that. If you know that little vinyl CDJ button. Right, but what do you mean? So if you put the CDJ button, it no longer reacts like a, a vinyl mode. It, you know, you, you if you spin it like this, it scrolls to the track faster. And then if you go like this, you know, it slows it down a bit. Right. Similar to how you pitch bend like on the. So slow. so when you click the CDJ mode, then you can still use that sideways thing. But if your finger touches it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't stop. So right? then you just touch the whole thing. I just touch the whole thing. It's it's probably the same. I probably use that As method because I'm a, the I'm a pincher. I'm, me too. I'm me too. Spindle. 
on so the that's probably why I do thing. that method on the uh, <laughs> yeah. straight pincher style. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, me too. And I had to get used to doing that side thing. And then I always, once in a while I'll hit it and it fucks my whole mix up and I'm like, yeah. ah, so try that make, one next time. Oh, okay. But you have to, if you get too drunk, you'll forget. <laughs> yeah, you have to remember it, but it becomes habit just to click it off and everything. Right, it's just one of those muscle memory things. Like, yeah, you got to just but keep, but get in the habit. Speaking of the spindle thing, too, that's the reason why I can't use phase because you know, uh, it's difficult to for me. Yeah. At least, I'm not a I'm not I a know. Mic glider. I had or, to just make myself get used to touching the outside yeah. and just do it. Or, but I grab the record. I'll just I'm better at touching the record or pushing it forward. Um, but on the CDJ, it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, that's dope. Uh, what, um, that's amazing. Uh, oh, I also say that's amazing on this podcast 5 million times in a row. So <laughs> you get a counter every there. Bing. <laughs> that was probably like my 10 billionth. That's amazing. Um, that was the first time I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I try not to do it. So it's amazing that I'm not doing it. Um, uh, all right, so your live stream is just between those two spots you're able to do it. Um, yeah, and then the other spots, I, if I go live on their account, um, right, we'll do it from their DJ booth. You know, obviously right. the business is shut down, but yeah, Lock, you will do it at the lock and key booth or you know, right. They let one or two people in, and yeah, yeah, yeah. see, like you know, the owner and his dog, right? <laughs> we'll have a pizza. Um, what? Um, so you know, we said before you do. I mean. You're a scratch DJ in the sense that you're really good at scratching. <laughs> and obviously you've been practicing and, and doing sessions with people forever, right? I mean, Thank you about that. Um, but also you do nightclubs, you do bars, you do uh, private events, you do yeah. corporate gigs, you tour DJ for people. Um, you know, similar to me, I feel like I hit a lot of those type of things. Um, yeah. and I try to just be well rounded and versatile with whatever I'm doing. Um, and so I see that in what you're doing too. And like, um, I end up getting so many crazy stories from a lot of these private gigs I do. Yeah. I know you did the, um, Snapchat CEOs, oh, yes. uh, wedding. I do have a funny story about that. Yeah. What? I don't, think I I don't know if you can tell it or not, but if you want to talk <laughs> about it on here, I'd love to hear. Yeah, so, um, well, I had to sign an NDA. So, I, I a tech company that well, I was DJing had their their wedding, and um, okay, I already said it though. You want me to cut that out? That's all right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right, and uh, so, basically, what happened was uh, it was a beautiful wedding. It was at their house, and um, you know, the liaison, the or the the organizer, the coordinator. She, she's like texting you when you're in front. So, you know, I go over there and the, the ceremony's already going on. And then they're like, I go and do like the, you know, fingerprint scan, whatever. And yeah. then she brings me up. She's like, oh, go wait up in this room right now. They're still doing the ceremony. Come up here. There's someone here. Um, <clears throat> this is Jay, like, you know, and it's just right. chilling there. And then it's kind of like the green room, but it's like their living room or whatever. So uh -huh. we're waiting for the ceremony. I'm just chatting up the guy. He's got like a guitar. He's just kind of like strumming along. It's like me, 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 my mo, me, me. <clears throat> I'm like, oh, you, uh, you sing or something? He's like, oh yeah, I'm just doing. There's someone that's singing right now downstairs, and uh, I'm just gonna join her for one song. You know, when they're ready. Right. Like, cool. And then he's like, you ever get nervous? He's talking to me. Yeah. <clears throat> I, you know, I start like coaching him because I think he's nervous. I'm like, oh, don't worry, bud. You got this. Like, you know, I've DJed <laughs> for this family before. Great family. Like. You got nothing to worry about. <laughs> and then I start like getting chummy. Like there's like, you know, uh, so, some drinks. I'm like, oh, they got the 42. They got the good shit. You want a drink, buddy? <laughs> like, you know. Right, right. Talking shit. And then the lady texts me. She's like, yo, Jay, so, uh, start coming down. They're ready for you. So, you know, I start walking down the stairs together. And then there's like at the bottom of the stairs, somebody like with a guitar, like ready for the guy to put his arm through and just start playing and sing the song. And I'm like, oh, look at you, my man. I'm like, oh, you ready to go? You ready to rock it, bro? <laughs> he puts us in it. And they're like, ladies and gentlemen, Jason Mraz. <laughs> oh, my God. But I was like, I turned like beat red. And I was like, <laughs> turned to the lady. I was like, why the fuck did you tell me that was who that was? <laughs> like, I'm over here coaching him. Like, <laughs> you know? That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's I was so super funny. embarrassed, man. I went and hid. Like, I didn't want to see them when they were done. I went and hid. And <laughs> 
<laughs> that's amazing yeah. dude but who knows i don't recognize people all the time you don't I know, know. <laughs> but and we get put in those situations i was doing like a fundraiser for like this super wealthy kind of school and all these super famous rich powerful people are out there and i'm back in the green room similar kind of thing and they were like oh some of the other artists are going to be back here with you and i'm like all right so like i'm back there and then this dude walks in, I look and it's Patton Oswalt, the comedian. Wow, yeah, yeah. And good. he, then some other famous actor guy comes in, they're practicing their monologue. And I'm just like, okay, now I feel weird. I'm like looking through my Serato and I keep looking back <laughs> at them. And then finally Patton Oswalt looks over at me and he's like, who the hell are you? <laughs> and I was like, I'm the DJ. And he goes, oh, you're the DJ? He goes, okay, okay. He goes, I was wondering, you're just some guy sitting there on a computer. And I'm like, what the fuck's happening right here? We're practicing. And I go, no, I don't want to bother you guys, but I'm enjoying listening to you practice your monologue. So, And then he was like, he's like, I'll tell you something I learned. He goes, I used to be a DJ. And I was like, what? Wait, and he, go, Yeah, he goes, I used to be a wedding DJ. So probably not. I don't think he was having like cut sessions with Rob Swift and Patton Oswalt. <laughs> but he was like, I used to be a wedding DJ. And he's like, what I learned is that if an, the, any event planner that feeds the DJ is a good event planner. He's like, if they ignore you and don't feed you, then they're a piece of shit. <laughs> I was like, Cause I had this big ass meal, like the best food ever spread. And he's like, so you're getting hooked up. I'm like, I know. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, you, you end up in these weird situations, right? Where you're like, okay, who am I talking to? What is happening right now? Well, usually also like, uh, I have like a couple of homies of mine that, um, I, I, I guess mooch is not <laughs> a nice way to put it, but a couple of friends of mine that like to uh, enjoy the uh, fringe benefits, you know. Yeah, of, of course. Me too. The DJ. I'm like, come with me. Yo. Yeah. So I'll do a couple of these things and like, you're not supposed to bring anybody, but like I'll bring like one or two yeah. people, you know. Yeah, of course. And then when you get there, like, all right, here's your credentials or whatever. So I did, um, uh, I have a funny story about this one guy and yeah. my buddy Devin, he came with me. I was, it was a new year's party. It was at the Staples center also for uh, Snapchat and uh, Drake and, and Diplo were like performing. And I was, I was like opening DJ from like nine to 1130. Right. But with our, with our credentials uh, it allowed us to, you know, go anywhere. So I'm finished with the, with the DJing. And then my buddy Devin is like, yeah, you know, I've already been trying while you were, while you were DJing to see where this bracelet can take us. He's like, this one will take us out of everywhere. Don't worry. <laughs> so like, all right, I'm following him. We like go through like the basement of the Staples Center around here and there. Yeah. And then we end up, he's like, yeah, come in here. I was in here earlier. And we end up in like Drake's dressing room. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then like, I'm, I don't want to go in there. I'm like too shy. I'm like just kind of in the cut. Yeah. And he, he's really a chatty dude. So he's like chatting up the craft services, everything. And then like, you know, all the, everybody's there. And then they go for the pre-show prayer. And I see my boy Devin in, in the prayer with like Drake doing the prayer. And I was like, no, you guys got balls. <laughs> like, Yo, like fucking nuts. <laughs> that's the, the best. <laughs> that's so dope. But afterwards, I was like, Devin, you need to tell him that you're with the DJ next time. <laughs> yeah, seriously. They, that's so funny. <laughs> that's amazing. I know I've had situations like that too. Or even, oh my God, we had one time where I was doing like, um, Dre's Hollywood like before it came to Ve but before the new Dre's Vegas it was like on top of the W Hotel oh, yeah, in I remember Hollywood yeah. and they would have uh, so many people in there and this girl was coming up like yo I'm Rihanna's assistant um, she wants she loves your DJ and she wants to hear these songs or this song I was like shit all right so I was trying to like incorporate it At the end of the night they're like yo Rihanna is going to party up in the the sweets um and wants to know if you got if you want to come i'm like yes <laughs> so i'm with my cousin shout out to chris vanger vangerville he's on he has his own show called uh the shane show all right but uh he's like i'm like yo come with me he's like come with you he's like what am i supposed to do i'm like just act like we do this all the time that's all you got to do <laughs> so like we roll up there and we're just like in this after party with like rihanna and her friends and we're just like all right we got to act like we do this all the time and hang with these people so it's all good yeah. so like you know they're rolling up like mad blunts i'm like damn i can't believe like her and her friends smoke so much weed but like <laughs> everybody's just doing whatever and we're talking about music and, and he's hanging out he's like and he keeps looking at me like, what the hell are we doing? You know, and, I mean, I don't know. We met like 
uh, some stuff I probably can't say, but yeah. like basically it's that kind of shit where you're just like, how you am took, I in this situation that night is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll leave it. Uh, a lot of the, we met a lot of crazy people that night, but yeah, crazy. You just end up, you're like, how am I in a penthouse with Rihanna and her friends at three in the morning, like drinking and smoking and it's, like, it's what the, is going this, on? The DJing stuff is just crazy where it leads you all this is like, it's the truth. Bands. How do you deal with um, like if celebrities give you requests and stuff? Does that happen sometimes? How, how, uh, any funny st- stories? I have a funny story about that. <laughs> oh my that. God, I got so many. But like I got, you know, look, I want them to be happy. I want everyone to be happy mm. at the party. I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to be cool with it. I have I have like this Bill Murray story that's the best. Oh yeah, I, I heard like, that one before. Yeah, I, I told it on Road Podcast. Um, you got to but, give it up, right? Yeah, I mean, I could tell like the brief version on here, but like, because I've told it before, but basically, yeah, like I'm DJing this super crazy Oscar party in Hollywood and I see this older looking dude dancing and nobody's dancing with him and I'm like, is that Bill Murray? It looks like him. I'm like, there's no way though. He ends up coming over. He's like, can you play this song? I start playing it. The, the, um, actually, no, he, I, I forget what happened in that part, but he came over. He asked me just to, play play whatever yeah. they um they come over they go we're shutting it down we got to turn the music off and i'm like yo bill murray just came over he wanted to ask for a song and they're like we don't care and I, and then oh no here's what happened sorry rewind so basically he comes over he goes i want to hear a song i go uh they told me they're gonna they're gonna shut it down and i can't play any more music he goes if they come over to you um i'll protect you and I'm like, Bill Murray's going to protect me. All right. So I go, okay, sounds good. He leaves. They come over. They start saying it to me. He sees it. He comes over. He goes, hey, hey, hey. Uh, I, I asked him to play, keep playing and keep people going. And uh, they were like, but Bill, we got to we gotta turn the music off. And I'm like, damn, he's actually protecting me. And then they go, um, okay, listen, Bill, you get one more song and that's it. And he looks at me and this is like glint in his eye and he goes, can you play Marvin Gaye got to give it up the extended version? And I'm like, Oh my God, he's a genius. Cause it's like 14 and a half minutes on. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And they look at me and they're like, that's it. That's it. Okay. The security and the manager walks away. I start playing it. Nope. He's dancing with the girls. Five minutes go by six minutes, seven minutes. The security and the people are looking at me like, what are you doing? He's still dancing like nine minutes. They come over. They're like, turn it off. Whatever you do. He comes over. He's like, you said one song. This is the one song. I mean, that's it. I'm like, dude, he's such a fucking genius. So they end up going we don't care who it is just turn it off i turn it off and i'm looking over for him and he's not even there and he's just already like trailing away like in this hallway going towards a elevator and i'm like that was insane like how did that happen but i've gotten in fights like i had this one of the ladies from uh i don't know she's she's from one of those real housewife shows but she's like one of the most famous ones and she kept coming up to me at this party. It was like really rich, powerful people. And it was going really well. I knew what I was doing. And she's coming over going, you need a, no one's dancing. Oh my God. I you're, hate cha- you're changing the song too fast. And I go, I know what I'm doing. I'm here for a reason. Like, leave me alone. So she goes, if you play Empire State of Mind, everyone will go crazy. It's like all the same things anyone says that's annoying. You know, and I go, actually, they're all dancing right now. I don't know what you want me to do. She goes, no, this sucks. Nobody's dancing. No one's into it. And you're changing the song too fast. And I'm like, bitch, oh what my the God. fuck? So she goes, I'll give you $1,000 if you play Empire State of Mind right now. So I'm like, all right, Bert, record skip, <laughs> Empire State of Mind. Give me the thousand dollars. So put it on. She, she goes, well, put it on. Same shit. People like it, but they're not dancing any more or less. It's no difference. She goes, look, see, and I go, <laughs> see what? I go, it's the same thing. She goes, you don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. And I go, you're crazy. Of course, she doesn't give me one dollar, let alone a thousand dollars. And it was totally fine. I was like, All and finally, I was out. like. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I had to sign NDAs on this one too. But I was like, I was like, finally, I just told her to her face. I was like, leave me the fuck alone. I'm like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. You don't. You got your world. I got my world. Just get the fuck out of here. You know, we got in a whole <laughs> argument. Let's but. do our NDA stories, but. <laughs> no <laughs> name cut them out no i got crazy i got two other nda ones i don't even think i could tell on here <laughs> maybe one day i'll tell you outside of it i got a funny uh 
request uh, story. This is why I didn't have to sign an NDA. So it's when I can okay, tell. Good. <laughs> but I was um, I was DJing at Soho House and I was uh, playing. Oh, this is before. Was, uh, I think when you came and visited me, we were, we were playing down in the room. That yeah, day. yeah. That was fun. Yeah, that was that one of the was first fun. times I saw you DJ. be up there where the chandelier is. That's where right. you used to be. And it was kind of maybe it was like five, six years ago or seven years ago. But it was like kind of just like lounge, cool vibes, whatever. So, you know, yeah. I'm playing lounge shit. I'm playing I'm playing like Prince. People are dancing and shit, but it's not you're not going out. It's not a club. Right. So I'm playing Prince and then fucking uh, so, so like someone walks by and then, you know, it's towards the end of the song. So I mix out. Of, I forget what I play, but I, I changed it. And then she doubles back and she's like, oh, my God, that was like that was Prince. I love Prince. I wanted to exit on that on that song. And then I look up and then it's Mariah Carey. And I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, yeah, well, what, what do you want to hear? Like, you know, I love you. I'll play whatever that. I'm sorry. You know, I didn't realize. Right. You wanted to exit on that song. And even if that's a thing. But she's like, oh, uh, she's like uh, <laughs> she wanted to exit the room on that song. Yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> so then, just, so I was like, "Play what? What, what, what do you want to hear? You know, you're Mariah Carey. I love you. I'm a big fan." She goes, "Play Fantasy featuring ODB." <laughs> she like shook her hair like that and then walked off. That's amazing. <laughs> she said, featuring ODB. <laughs> Fe- she, I, she did like the radio. Yo, you know, I know that's true because I did this Oscar party yeah. and there was like everyone ever there and like all this crazy shit happened. But I'm DJing and this dude comes up to me and he goes. Mariah Carey is walking in and you can play her music now. And I was like, <laughs> wait, does she want me to play her music? He goes, yes, she wants you to play her song as she enters. And I'm like, so it's exactly what you said. And I played that song fantasy with featuring ODB. <laughs> no, but it's funny because a lot of these places that have the, the, these like kind of unspoken rules, yeah. some places which are like, don't call attention to the people. So yeah, like, of course. I'm, I'm playing fantasy and then like fucking three staff runs over. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. And I'm like, Oh, she requested like, Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. She wants that shit. Yeah. Like they were, yo, that night I did that party. I got a pretty funny story. I could tell. I mean, yeah. this, <laughs> let's hear it. Let's, let's yo, well, stories. just that, that whole night was just insane to me because it was like, it was an Oscar party right the night before the Oscars. And, I mean, everyone ever was there, but I'm DJing and I just hear like in front of me, like so many people were standing in front of me. And so I was trying to sort of play to them and see what they liked. But I just, I'm looking down for a second. I hear, (laughs) and I look and it's like, I look up, it's just Seth Rogen, like laughing with somebody and like. I was like trying to hear their conversation because they're right in front of me. He's like, <laughs> and I'm like, this is the best thing ever. But then so many things start happening. And all of a sudden, like Ray Liotta ends up in a conversation, like with the same way you had your arm on the yeah, turntable. <laughs> Yo, he had his arm on my DJ booth oh, and the DJ booth had like, a piece of wood that was blocking the the turntables to sort of make it look nicer, you know, yeah. like almost just like sitting there so you couldn't see the wires and stuff. And so he's sitting there. He has a glass of red wine with ice, oh, no, which is weird. <laughs> and he yeah. has it just sitting there. He's talking. He's Ray Liotta. He's very Ray Liotta. Like he's like, this fucking guy comes in and I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And I don't know. Do you want to come over here? No, I don't want to come over here. What's that stuff? And I'm like, just trying to listen. Like, this is unbelievable. So then he starts talking about some music thing and I hear them talk and they're, and the answer to their question that all three of these people could not figure out was Jackson Brown. And so they're like, but who was the guy in the group? Who's the guy in the group? So he goes, Hey, I bet you this, the, the DJ knows, Hey, hey, he asked me and I go, Jackson Brown. He goes, there we go. So he goes, see the, the, he goes, what's your name? So then all of a sudden I'm in the conversation and he's, I'm like spider. He's like, so I, I'm like spiders. I keep saying spider. He can't understand what I'm saying. I end up having to give him my real name. He like, t- he's like, Oh, okay. Okay. So then he starts talking to me in the conversation with them. And I'm like, am I supposed to be DJing what's happening? But he's very like this with his hands, using his hands yeah. like, Hey, what the fuck? And he goes, so that's what I'm saying. I don't want to boom hits the red wine glass with ice. It tips over, spills onto the whole DJ booth, but not onto my equipment. That that wood thing was there. And it goes under. So, like, it goes under the turntables and under the mixer and under the wood thing. And he's immediately like, oh, fuck. Uh, all right, I got to fix this shit. 
And I go, no, no, it's fine. I'm sure people that work here will, will figure it out. He goes, no, no, I'm getting towels. I'm getting a napkin. I'm, I'm going to fix this. I go, you don't need to fix it. You're Ray Liotta, dude. <laughs> so he he ends up getting all these towels and he starts mopping up the stuff. He takes shirt off and like uses it. Yeah. Up. Everyone's looking at us. It's so weird. He's mopping all the stuff. It looks like I'm like making him do it. I'm like, yo, you don't have to do it. He's mopping. He looks at me and he goes, he goes, okay. He goes, pick up, uh, pick up the wood. <laughs> and I go, no, 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 it's fine. Like, I don't, he goes, pick up the wood, pick up the wood. I'm going to go under. I go, no, we don't need to pick up any. And he just like stops and gives me this look. And he goes, pick up the fucking wood. Like he's going to murder me. And I'm like, yes, sir. okay. <laughs> and so like, I pick it up and like, you know, when you pick up something that has like liquid, like red wines, just dripping down off of it. He's mopping it all up at this point. Like the event planners see us and they're like, what are you making Ray Liotta do? And I'm like, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> So he ends up mopping it all up, and then they come over. They're like, Ray, Ray, you need anything? He's like, another glass of red wine with ice in it would be fucking nice. And I'm like, okay, great. Oh so he ends God. up getting it, and then he just ends up chilling there the whole night and just talking to people. He And he kept saying shit. He goes, because they had specifically asked me to not make people dance and don't play, like, yeah. hype stuff. Don't play anything new. Don't play Drake. Right. Just play, like. Those are the weirdest gigs, right? So it's weird. Like, yeah. Weird. I even got a speech of play music from the 1950s and don't mix it and make sure there's silence between the songs. I was like, what kind of DJing is that? <laughs> those are like those soul crushing gigs. They pay you yeah. like seven times more than like. That was what it was. But I got these stories out of it. And then they go, he goes, he goes, I don't understand. There, there's all these beautiful women here. Why aren't you playing music to make them dance? And I go, well, they don't want me to do that. And he goes, just do me a favor. Put on a disco song. Let's see what happens. And so he's going through my stuff, trying to find a disco song. I'm like, all right, I'll do it for you. So I put it on. And he goes, and he goes, look at those girls. They're going to start dancing. Watch this. So I put, so this is Ray Liotta thinking he's a DJ. So I put it on and then they don't dance. And he's like, okay, you're right. I see what you're saying here. They're <laughs> not going to do it. Like, and he's just like analyzing DJing and like all with this Ray Liotta voice. I was like, this is the weirdest, best night of my life. So that was it. And then he left. He's like, thank you so much, Oliver. Like calling me by my name. I was like, okay, cool. So really weird awesome. things from these parties. <laughs> so I feel like, like we should write these stories down as DJs because it, like I forget you all have the, to. Like, the Mariah thing, like pr probably this, you know, story. I, I always forget, like we've done some crazy shit and yo, so you to gotta write it, it down. Uh, Mr. Best, DJ Mr. Best, um, he does some of the craziest things. And like me and him will tell each other stories after the gig of these and they're unreal. Like he has so many and he's good. He writes them down. And yeah. I mean, he has same, some of these most insane stories that we can't even tell, you know, like it's it's nuts i have a couple <laughs> nda ones animate them like you know like that, that, <laughs> well funny enough that was years ago me and uh dj city and i had this whole thing and we have one episode that never was released of that where we would tell the stories and we animated them and i had yep. shout to adam in vegas adam dj you know oh, yeah, um, adam. Adam. Yeah, what up, adam? he adam. did all the drawings yep, yep. and uh we had morse code told this amazing story and we animated it and uh, so I want to get back to that. Maybe we can animate these stories and yeah, get someone okay. out there. These are these stories are hilarious. All you animators at home, you got time if you want to do All it. Us. Might be able to hire you on after this. Or maybe we can DM one of those accounts that always DMs us. It's like if you need any animation, hey, <laughs> I do cartoons. <laughs> if you did, I, how do yo. those people exist? There's so I get so many of those. I know what the hell I is. I even that? got this shitty email today from like uh, from uh, something, and it was like, yeah for a promo for Instagram, like, yeah, for every single thing that you put on your Instagram and they sell, you'll get 10%. I'm like, oh you know God. what? How did you get my email? I'm not comfortable with this kind of promotion. I'm getting so many of those too. It's nuts. Um, that's crazy. All right. Well, I got, I got a bunch of other stories too, but I'll, I'll tell you some other after, yeah. or we'll get there. We need a part two. We need to, we need to do a part two, just crazy private event yeah. stories on here. Um, all right. Well, let's, let me, um, hit, some of these people from the internet. Um, yeah, yeah. I got people on Twitter and Instagram asking you questions. Twitter wasn't okay. as strong. Instagram, we had some good ones. Um, right. Sorry, Twitter guys. I'll. Uh, oh, actually, here's some funny Twitter ones. Uh, someone wrote, um, Funkhausen wrote, uh, when playing peaches and cream, do you slam it on the one and double up the intro or mix it in over a chorus of the previous track? 
Okay. That's very specific. I'm like, is that your boy just asking a specific thing? No, I, is that your friend? I think I saw that too. And I was like, maybe that's. No, I don't know friend. what that even means exactly. Um, well, well, I mean, where it's at, boop, boop, you, boop, that one yeah. intro. I mean, I probably, you I use the intro. Sit in, uh, if you want, or you could just, you know, press the cue point to bring it back, or you could just loop it with the four right. bar loop. Or I, I think the using cream. I typically mix it with a. Uh, Doesn't it go b- 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 a little bad boy or something? No, like. that's, that's a dance with me. Oh, uh, yeah. What am I talking about? I mix those. But I mix it with those two. Me those too. two sound good <laughs> together. But I think with peaches and cream, I do the. Uh, I, I bring it in like this with the, with the low pass. Oh, uh, okay. So, because it's kind of aggressive. I, I think that's how I yeah, do it. True. Yeah, true. That is All a right. very uh, particular question, though. Yeah, very particular. <laughs> I thought that was like an inside joke with your friend or something. Um, all right, let's see. There's a bunch, so maybe we just jam through them. What's your dream setup? Uh, what does that mean, setup in terms of Probably gear? DJ setup, I would assume. Um, Man, you know what? Man, people are going to fucking shame me, but... uh. Uh, oh, let's see. I, I would like to have an S9 that has the sound card of the 900 and also maybe with the knobs for effects of the 900. Still with these effects, too, because I like these. Yeah, I love it. And then with, but it happens to be four channel, this imaginary mixer. Right. And I've got two turntables and two CDJs on it. Boom. I, That's my like dream it. setup. That's tight. Yeah, like a 900 S9 hybrid with four turntables. Yeah. Pioneer makes two. enough random shit. They, they should make that. Yeah. Hit your contact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have JR hit hard. him up. Trying to been trying to get JR on this podcast, but he's uh it's like easier to get like Barack Obama, I feel like, than him. Like I don't know what his deal <laughs> Me is. Me and JR had a create another crazy like NDA uh thing where it was something was there and they wanted us to do a battle but it was pretty much i think it was sony so they needed us to only use sony theme songs so like I, they they came at me with a, a proposal so i obviously they needed somebody else so i obviously picked the best ones that's like yeah, give me ghostbusters yeah. give me fucking seinfeld and then i right. left him with like you know um what is that uh was some shitty ones. I'm sorry, JR. No, he had men in <laughs> black though. <laughs> but anyways, uh, That's that was funny. another funny story because afterwards we were done, we were in the, like the VIP area or whatever. Yeah. And then yeah. And 50 cent was right there. And then JR was like, Oh yeah, I know, I know 50. <laughs> so we went over and then like, we're talking to him for like 10 minutes about like Mayweather and about like boxing. And then, uh, when we were done, JR was like, Oh, he totally thought I was somebody else the whole time. <laughs> But That's he, so he was funny. Like, was he, I guess he had, uh, 50 came to his club in Phoenix. Right. Like, when they or something. So that all. Oh, my <laughs> God. No, dude, everyone used to come to that club. I used to play Pussycat Lounge with JR like 12 years ago, 15 years ago. I mean, so long ago. And, I mean, so many crazy things happened in there. I remember, like, I brought my, my wife now, who was my girlfriend at the time, came with me. And... You know, we had not been together that long and Mike Tyson was at the club and he posted up right neck out right next to the booth and outside the girl's bathroom. So she's like going in the bathroom and coming out. I'm like, first of all, please don't harass my girlfriend. Also, don't ask me for a song I don't have and punch me in the face. Also, he was not like. Not that Mike Tyson has ever been chill, but he seems way more chill to be around now than back yeah. then. Oh, back then, yeah. Bulldog. That night, like some crazy shit happened too. Like I in the news, like I think he got arrested for cocaine oh, wow. in Arizona. All this crazy shit, <laughs> but but yeah, that that club was legendary with Jr. back in the day. Um, but but he was supposed to come on this week, last week. He's like, I need a haircut. I'm like, everyone needs a haircut, dude. Come on, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> type the comments at find his at. I think it's DJR. Yeah. Right. D DJR, tell him to come on. We yeah, need come him. on. We need DJR. Um, all right. Next question. Oh, that question was from Tony K Films. Um, good job, oh, well, Tony. He's the guy that runs our Twitch. Oh, okay. Let's there see. I'm about to, uh, maybe I'll follow him then. I'm following him. Here we go. Tony K, you're not even following me, buddy. I want to see your Twitch set up. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lucky Lou, the homie from Vegas. Lou, what up, Lou? He says, this is really introspective. Um, oh, if you shit. were from <laughs> if you were from Mars, how would you solve Earth's 
current problems? Wow, man. That's an Elon Musk type question. If I was from Mars, how would I solve <laughs> I Earth's problems? Jesus. <laughs> Lucky Lou was smoking a joint with that. Another brain buster from Lou. Uh, I don't man, know. <laughs> I have no idea. I would okay. like, I would come in and abduct like some humanoids and then transplant them to Mars. Isn't that a thing that we're doing anyway? So yeah, you know, it's we'll not some Elon on Musk. That. Yeah. That's what I'll do. Lou. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Lou, you're tripping us out. You're on mush- He's microdosing out there. <laughs> um, all right. Will Zoe be coming back to NYC after the beer virus is done? And why is he so damn good on the tables? That's official quest. Official K quest. Official K quest. Hold up. Official K quest. Mark, um, will I be coming back to New York? Yeah. Come I will. On, he's coming you back. Know, I got to. We were supposed to go there. Um, I was supposed to be there maybe three weeks ago, Dumbo House, uh, uh, so in Dumbo. Dumbo. But, um, you know, obviously it's very dangerous there. So, yeah. Uh, why am I so nasty on the scratching? Well, I don't know if I'm that nasty, but I practice <laughs> a lot. And how long have you been DJing, like as a whole? Uh, I started scratching um, in 98. Okay. Because I was in eighth grade or 97. Yeah. Uh, seventh grade, seventh or eighth grade, I started scratching. And okay. I didn't really DJ. I, I just scratched probably from, you know, eighth, ninth grade up until like 11th grade. Right. I was kind of a loser. I just scratched. There was a thing called Pal Talk, it. and I would scratch on there. I only All had right. one turntable, too. And then in uh, 12th grade, like, it, it was cool to be a DJ or whatever. People found out that I scratched. So then I was like, oh, let me try and learn to mix. Right. So then I started teaching like house parties in 12th grade and uh, stupid things like when you're a kid, like uh, like church events, like wherever you can, a, a kid can do something that, you know. Yeah. Whatever, that kind of stuff, you know, whatever, sport sporting events. Yeah. And then I went to college in Virginia Tech and um, – I really learned to DJ from the radio there from like one of my OG homies, uh, C sharp. Um, this is pre Serato. So we were, this is right when the CDJ came out that allowed you to burn like a hundred songs on one yeah. CDJ. You remember that? So it was as, like, because it was as an MP3 CD. Yeah, MP3, right? So it was a game changer, but he was kind of a, a old head, like OG. So he didn't really fully understand how to use that technology. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I was kind of explaining it to him and he was DJing all of the like, black fraternity parties and like all the, you know, or student organizations and the radio. Yeah. So that's where I really learned to uh, DJ was in college. And then so, Serato came out, I think when I was a junior or a sophomore in college, I don't I forget what year. Do you remember what year it was? 2003 or. Uh, so, Oh, well, Serato. I think it came out 2004. Five or kind of, oh, yeah. I remember there was Final Scratch and it was really shitty for a while, and then Serato yeah. came out and it was good, right? And then that was kind of a game changer. And then I, I moved to California and I linked up with uh, some rapper homies that were like doing these underground tours, right? And I was doing those, man, and those were really dusty and crusty. But shout out to uh, you know, I'm talking like 50 bucks a day, like touring right. the u.s in a shitty like old mobile or a volkswagen yeah well those are some fun times though but um, yeah i definitely learned to dj more of those because the pre-show before the rapper goes on then you have to play to the crowd right and then so i did a lot of that and then the and then um shout out to uh, you know lyrics and dumbfounder those are the rappers that i worked with we st- then we started the tour they became popular we started tour internationally and then maybe uh six or no, maybe seven years ago, there's a place in uh, Koreatown here called uh, the Lion Hotel. Right. And then um, that used to be something else, but then the chef Roy Choi turned it into kind of a, uh, there was like a, a, not a nightclub, but it was like a lounge and then a restaurant and stuff. Yeah. And that's really when I started to DJ full time because he was like, yo, um, you know, do you want to be the DJ here and help curate the program? And, get it going and then before that koreatown was not really a place where people would go there was no break room back then or anything koreatown was known for like places to eat korean barbecue or you know, have a boba or you know right. whatever go to karaoke yeah we, we were transforming you know the the scene over there and then uh roy left 
that and went to Vegas. And then, you know, I came with him and I met up with uh, Houston Brothers and uh, Sean Christie gave me a chance and Roy gave me a chance. So and I've been in Vegas for about a year now. So it's been a, a journey from the underground shit to the scratching to, you know, the club, everything. That's a great story, though. What was your connection with Roy Choi before that? Man, you know what? He was a fan of uh, the group that we were that I was DJing with, Dumbfounded. Dumbfounded. He's, okay. Because Roy is a uh, a big fan of like the LA the rap scene. He's big of like dilated people, it was, like Babu, yeah, you know, all those guys. Um, For sure. He's in tune with with the rap. So actually, I didn't really know him. I was in uh, Yogurt Land on La Brea and Third. And he was there. He was like, yo, DJ Zo, right? I was like, oh, yo, what's up, dude? And he was with his daughter. And um, he was like, yeah, I'm a big fan. I was like, all right, cool. He's like, yeah, it's, it's me, uh, Chef Roy. You know? I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> and then I was like, Chef Roy? What the fuck? Who is that? And then I was like, oh, okay, that's the the Kogi guy, you know? Right. And, uh, man, Roy is like a man of the people. He's a great, great dude. I be- we became close friends after that. And he's just 100% like put wears his heart on his sleeve so you know That's big great. up roy he he got, helped me out a lot in vegas too so he's yeah he's amazing i mean he he does so many great things for the community great chef dope great taste in uh <laughs> djing and yeah. music i mean all the music at best friend is so ill like you said i noticed there was so much la underground hip-hop which is what i grew up yeah. on i grew up here and that was i was in groups and i wanted to be dilated peoples more yeah. than anything you know <laughs> so um the fact that that's the the soundtrack of his restaurant just makes me want to sit in there and never leave oh, yeah. yeah it's so dope yeah that's that's super cool um what uh all right let's hit a few more questions from the yeah, internet yeah. the yeah, internet sorry <laughs> what Sorry for rambling, but you know. No, no, that's what we're here for. In weeks. <laughs> I know. Um, I know. That's the thing. These podcasts have been longer than usual, but I'm like, yo, we haven't talked to anyone. It's the only time we get to actually connect. Yeah. So let us go. Um, but I, I know. But that that's so dope. No, I wanted to know. I didn't actually didn't. I knew you had a connection like that, but I didn't know the exact the exact story in the way that it went. That's super interesting. Um, okay. IFTW. Um, image, image from, from the, wood. the wood, image from the wood. Shout out, super amazing DJ and scratch DJ and all that. He says, uh, "Oh, he has a he. Oh God, he has a lot here. Let's see what's happening." Oh. Um, he said, "Anseto Molina." Oh, Aniseto Molina. <laughs> Aniseto Molina. Uh, that's a that's a cumbia song. Uh, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I think he trips out because I, I'm actually, I'm half Filipino and half Italian, but I look like Hispanic. So people always <laughs> think I'm Hispanic, but, um, yeah, you were killing it on the LAFC. Uh, oh, stream yeah, with thank, that. Yeah. So he is, so I, I think he said that because I think he trips out that I know that song, but the only right. reason I know that song, or, uh, uh, it's La Cumbia San Persana. I think La Cumbia San Persana. Okay. It's because I used to DJ like fucking, 10 years ago or maybe even longer at a uh, Virgil middle school <laughs> in after school, like middle school yeah. maybe it was 12 years ago. Yeah. 13 years ago. Anyways, it was hella long ago. And uh, I mean, I had no job. I wasn't teaching at clubs. I was doing these, those $50 tours. And then like yeah. when the tours done, but I was like, Oh, I need money. So right. So we have an after school DJing program, teach the kids and the kids were all into that kind of cumbia and all that kind of crazy, you know, um, uh, music that their parents were into so i've got like a sick cumbia salsa folder crazy so I think that's probably why he said that because okay. like well he has a bunch let's see uh he said proper question how did you develop your style of jumping up and down in tempos oh <laughs> i was gonna say i'm jumping up and down on the dj table <laughs> how do you learn to jump up and down no uh yeah tempos i do the same thing and some people like it some people don't like it but i love djing like that yeah, I, I really love DJ like that. And how did I develop it? I would say ADD. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't know. Just wanting re- to play this and wanting to play that, right? But I really enjoy a feature that I've been fucking around with lately on the CDJ that I really love. And I don't know, some people might roast me for it or not, but this is the only what? time to use the sync. Is I'll put it at the ultra pitch on plus or minus 50, and then I'll drop it down to like minus 38, and then I'll have the other song going in here, and then I'll sync it. And then by using that, you know, 
adding it from up to 30, let's say we're at like 70 BPM and I'll bring it all the way up to 110. I'm making my own transition tool, you know, but I'll yeah. try to grab it on a part of the song where there's not a lot of, you know, drums, like, you know, like throw some more, throw some more, throw, it's kind of acapella, throw some more, throw some more, throw some, throw some, you know? Yeah. And then that is another way I've been able to like drastically go in between BPMs, but also the ways that the methods you talked about, like having your loops ready to go or just, I've been even slamming the reverb, like the reverb out of something and then like Me scratching too. it. It's you know? the best. It's yeah. better than the echo to me. Like, and if yeah. you hit the reverb on the perfect time a little bit before and then yeah. pull it out and then you drop, and then you have time to then drop the other thing perfectly on beat and, of the other beat. So it feels like it's on beat, even if it changes tempo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, or even the sampler, it. like um, with the S9, they have the sampler cue. And then I'll, just, yeah. I'll put the uh, effects right here and then I'll just tighten the echo. So I'll be like, DJ, so, 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 and then like, you know, drop something. Right. Wait, but you, wait, what do you mean? You, you loop, you're looping it and then what? No, if you press this one right here that says sampler effects on, yeah. and, and then you just tighten, you just tighten the echo. So I started at like half and then go to one fourth, one eighth. It doesn't really grab it, but it just oh. tightens the loop to that right echo. so it's like so so so, 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 so. oh and, and you're pressing your your sampler <laughs> dj yeah. zo dj zo dj yeah. yeah. oh tight so see we're learning like, things here i, I didn't know i that. enjoy doing that too like really aggressive like in your face but it's not noisy right <laughs> yeah tastefully done or skillfully done skillfully, yeah <laughs> um dope <laughs> What um? What's your favorite city to DJ in, and why? Well, you're world traveler, so that's that's a lot. I'd say the U.S. Uh, besides hometown of L.A. I w and I would maybe consider you know Vegas is also not hometown, but that's where I DJ quite frequently in the past year. So excluding right. those two places because obviously I love those places. Um, I'd say New York, man. I fucking love New York. I know I love New York so yeah. much. Yeah. Dope. Um, and where do you play in New York? You play Dumbo, Soho, you said? Yeah, I played uh, 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 Soho House, Meatpacking, Soho House, and Dumbo. Play uh, Fat Buddha, Lower East okay. Side. Uh, played Lava before, played Tau before. Tight. A um, couple other places, can't remember. Oh, when we were touring, we did all those like uh, SOBs and uh, Highline Ballroom, Mercury Lounge, oh. uh, some other ones. What's the uh what's the biggest oh that was coming from Chow I don't even know. Erica? <laughs> oh, Chow Erica. Yep. Um I can't read it, sorry. But sorry, Erica. Uh <laughs> IFTW is five million questions. What's the biggest thing you've learned professionally in your DJ career? The biggest thing I learned professionally in my DJ career is um I mean you have to have a good attitude. Like I have so many tons of skilled skilled friends I mean, obviously like if you do have skills it's going to you know fast track your ability to get there but you know you got to kind of put yourself out there and you know to meet meet the right people and, and, and be able to talk and um yeah just have a good attitude like you know i had a lot of like uh older well not anymore now they're using serato a uh, shout out my boy DJ Counter Strike, <laughs> but for a long time, a lot of my OGs be like, "Fuck Serato, fuck Serato," right. you know. So just having a good attitude will help. I'm not I saying agree. that Counter Strike said that, but <laughs> Counter Strike, I DJed with you, and you were using Serato. So. <laughs> you're in. You're in. You've been infected with the Serato virus. <laughs> um, dope. What? Um, okay, we got Kenny. He says, where and how are we going to celebrate after this quarantine? I mean, does Ooh, anybody Kenny know? Kenny Yim. That's my boy, Kenny. Is it Kenny Yim? Yeah. We're going to celebrate Kenny in Bali. Kenny Yim, what up? Celebrate in Bali. Let's go. Yeah, we were supposed to DJ there. That's probably why I put that. At La Favela. <laughs> Shout out to Scratchy. That's where we'll celebrate. All right. I want to come. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who are your favorite Scratch DJs? Rated R said that. <laughs> Damn, if you, if, I wish you didn't tell me because then I would have told you rated R. But since he's <laughs> been asking the question, uh, he's not. He's, he can't be my favorite. But man, rated R is one of my favorite scratchers for sure. All right, go pee, I also like, I like Destruct from New York, of course. Yep. He's from he's here, amazing. actually. But he lives in New York. Serato. 
Um, I like a lot of my pal talk homies from back in the day. Empo was really sick. Oh yeah. Um, man, a lot of the European cats say I'm drawing a blank, you know, and of course the OGs like, you know, Hubert, the, the junkies, yep. shout out Babu, man, Melody and Chalk are like my favorites these days. They're like machines. Yeah. Especially Melody's like routines that he's putting on Twitter are just like f- fucking outrageous. Like I know. He, you know, <laughs> he makes it look so easy. So good. It's insane. Tight. What? Um. All right. Let's see. A few more. And uh, some people are just asking me to listen to their song. I'm saying I'm not. Doing <laughs> well, that. Um. You don't want to plug them real quick. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Some girl. Hi. What do you think of my song? It sucks. <laughs> Um, all right. What do you, what does bang bang mean in Zoe Serato? <laughs> this is definitely oh, someone that knows shit. you. That is someone that knows me. Okay. Bang bang is like, it's going to indicate, well, bang, like one bang is like a banger. It's shorter, shortened okay. for banger. Okay. But then bang bang is like, damn, that is the motherfucking slapper right there. Like, okay. Bang bang. <laughs> bang, bang. Goes, bang bang. Bang bang. You know, but <laughs> okay, then. Good. It, it just I, I don't know what it means, man. It just it, it means, means super banger. Looking, it means a banger of bangers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um all right, that was DJ Midas Touch. Midas, what up, Midas? All right, let's see. Uh this person wants to know just why don't you answer your phone? <laughs> uh why well, don't I answer my phone? Well, it's calling me right now, it's because I'm doing a podcast. Who it's is ASAP, it? ASAP Hanswell. Oh, what up, what up, Ty? Because you try to FaceTime me, bro. I don't FaceTime nobody. Including my yeah, girl. don't just FaceTime people out of nowhere. It doesn't matter if it's quarantine. You got to hit me with a text. And you know what? I meant to text you back, but I totally forgot. <laughs> you should text me and be like, yo, I think I might FaceTime I you. you. And then I'll be like, yo, I'm not going to answer that FaceTime. Just call me. And Thank then we're going to talk. <laughs> See, this is etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> all right what uh let's let's get a few more and um then we probably got to get out of here what's the most fun memory that you've had djing i mean we've talked about a lot of that if you want to answer you can most fun memory i, I don't know but it's something that like something I'll stands out stand out it's like just meeting jay-z through djing like he's oh like tell us about artists. that uh oh jr was there too and jr talked to him for a while too but uh I, I worked with the ra- closely rapper with, connection I, I worked closely with like um, Solange Knowles over the years, uh, just DJing a bunch of their parties and some family stuff. And like, Dope. I met, started DJing a bunch of their family stuff, like her son's birthday and stuff like that. Amazing. And, uh, you know, I run into like Beyonce and Jay Z, like, I see them, you know, after like four or five times, they'd be like, oh, the DJ looks familiar. Right. So, like, you know, just talking to Jay Z, although I'm, I was fucking like starstruck and, you know, I could not speak. I was like, oh, th- 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 I love you. <laughs> right. You know, I don't know why. I usually don't get like that, but it was funny because I was DJing uh, Solange's son's birthday, and then Blue Ivy came up to the uh, DJ thing. And was like, can you play? I'm in love with the Coco. And I was like, sure, sure. I have the clean version. Like, why not? I'll play it. So I played it, and then and then Jay Z comes over, and he's like, is she bothering you? And I'm like, no. She wanted Wait, the who, song. Who, like, who, I love you. Come over. Who Jay-Z, came over? Jay Z came over. No, but who was who asked you for the Coco oh, song? The daughter, Blue Ivy. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't hear. Oh my yeah. god. So, so um, that was really cool, you know. And That's then, amazing. And then Jr. was there, and of course, Jr. was more composed. He was like, "I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go on him and say, he's like, hello, Jay. I've been playing your songs for 20 years. Thank you.' <laughs> I was like, "Damn, you were composed, man. How did you do it?" And Jay Z's like, "I know." <laughs> he's like. Every DJ plays my shit. That's a, that's so funny. That's the second Jay Z story we've had on here. DJ Equal had a DJ Equal had two Jay Z stories that could have went hand in hand. That were pretty hilarious on his episode. I gotta check that one out. I'm yeah, it's good. It, they're they're pretty funny. Um, what um what's your favorite city to DJ in outside of the U.S. Outside of the U.S., man. Um. I love DJing in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. I just okay. actually, right before all this started, I was going to announce a new residency over there at my boys' club, uh, Commas in Saigon. And um, I went there about, I've DJed there about five times now, but we were going to do like bi monthly or every other month. Um, and I love DJing there, man. This is the whole team. I, I, lo- I, I really like Southeast Asia because 
you could take more chances. Like some places like when you DJ in like China or Macau or you know, right. Hong Kong, the type of songs that work are like, I got a feeling, you know, right. Right. Or like slow ride a low, which is like, you know, you don't really want to play those, but if you want right. to get booked again and you want to make the you know owner happy then maybe you'll play those. Yeah. Whereas in the Southeast Asia and Vietnam and the other places like, yeah, do your set, do what, do what you want. The people are receptive. So, you yeah. know, really enjoy it there. Tight. That's from discover Korea town. Yeah. So you got all of Korea town asking I you. Yeah, I said, <laughs> said hit up spider for all the questions. <laughs> Killing it. It's dope. What up? So, so, so like, with the um, celebrity, let's say the private event or the celebrity gigs, like, do you consciously have a way that you go about getting those gigs or keeping them going? Or is that just something that has sort of come into your life? Um, it's kind of come into my life, but I've learned and my boy Cal from Vegas put me up on it. He's like, you've got to check in with your clients like at all times. Like, let's say, for example, you've got a really good, you know, Facebook contact or you've got a really good contact at Google or, you know, like the Oscars or, or whatever it is, yeah. you know, you, you make that time to like call them, check in on them, you know, how yeah. are you doing during this quarantine or like, you know, even before quarantine right? You know, or bite or whatever, or just little gestures. Cause then, you know, they have these events and, this, uh, and then they'll start to think like, Oh, we've got, you know, DJ X, Y, Z. Oh, you know, I just talked to Zoe recently. Right. That's how I've maintained a lot of those relationships over the years. Just, you know, make sure you check in and don't treat it as just a one-off, you know? Right. So, what about, um, like, the international club gigs? Yeah, exactly. Same exact thing. And my boy Lou is the one that put me up on game about this, Lucky Lou, um, which I don't necessarily totally agree with in all the venues, but he told me, he's like, when you go to a place, he's like, don't try to get creative. He's like, just play play the bangers and, um, you know, drink with the owner. And I don't agree with the first part because I, I always like to get creative, but definitely drink with the owner, become chummy with the owner, you know, make a good impression, yep. do your yep. best, like do really well. And, and that's not to say that I haven't bombed before, but I've been invited back. Like Macau, I had like one of the worst sets of my life ever because like the advertising <laughs> is like hip hop night, but in, you know, Macau, hip hop means Ed Sheeran you know, or Justin Bieber, <laughs> the different right. definition, right? So, yeah, yeah. you know, that was a difficult one, but <clears throat> just maintaining the relationships, checking in. And a lot of the stuff too is uh, we, we, like when you go to certain places, there's going to be certain people that are, you know, controlling who can play where. And if I think Sean Christie said it, like you got to, it's like that ride at uh, Disneyland. You got to be like this tall, to ride like you know that's like the dj bar if you could dj you know at those at that level then like you can get booked but it's on you to see to how you talk to these people and like how you make an impression on these people for example with, Ve with vegas like we got our good friend eddie mack he helps me out incredibly at dj like five or six venues you know every month because of him in vegas and then the same thing in thailand i got my homies uh, bangkok invaders dj ono dj buddha yeah, shout to Ono. Yeah. I've hung with him before. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, these are the couple of guys that are booking in Southeast Asia. So just becoming friends, establishing friendship. and Right. In these times of quarantine, sharing, like, quarantine memes with the homies, <laughs> like, you know, yeah, building a camaraderie, you know. Right, right. Those are all super good points. I think people sort of, like, take for granted or almost seem common sense, but they're not. You know, if you don't go about and do it. Yeah. Even like when you go to the club, like, you know, so the, I see my boy Lou do it in Vegas all the time. That's why he's yeah. always so busy in Vegas. Um, I always ma I'm almost make fun of him. It'll be going to like the bouncer. He's like, hey, Joe, what's up? How's yeah. your mom? And then he goes to like right. the front door. He's goes, like, I told you, you break up with that crazy motherfucker. I told you it's crazy. They'd be like, yo, how's your cat? I'm like, <laughs> hey, right. Like, yeah, you really like, know everybody. He's like, bro, this is how I do it. Like, I, I know everybody. You know, stay busy. And like, yeah, that's like the Mark cool. Wahlberg technique. Yeah. It's like, how's your mother? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's great. You got any, uh, I think we're going to get out of here in a few minutes, yeah. but I mean, you've told us so much, but I also feel like there's so much also that we didn't even get to talk about from like the people, you know, just getting more in depth in the, the tour DJ you do and um, all your residencies and all that stuff. Um, do you have any 
projects you got you know going like through this time or after this um I, i'm doing the stream every uh, friday 5 p.m with dumbfounded okay. on uh, uh, twitch.tv slash dumbfounded live all right dope i can't wait to see that yeah, that's cool like multimedia where, like we just talk shit on each other and then i roast people and they call in with sound effects and then i dj a bit Amazing. so that's something kind of new and um just a, just a bunch of other little project scratches on on people's albums and dope you know but uh i'm kind of like don't want to do a mix because i have two that was another question i saw like i have two strikes on soundcloud so like i'm kind of terrified of where i should upload a mix i have like four of them ready to upload but i don't right. know where to put them. i think mixcloud looks really ugly like the ui yeah. just looks ugly to me. right and uh, you know i could put it on my website to download but then you can't see how many there's no like this many people downloaded it or so um you could put it on po- apple podcasts you could put it on podcasts and it won't get pulled uh uh-uh. uh oh wow at least for now <laughs> have to try make, that. make the zomano podcast and then uh and then just, just be oh, straight up mixes and yeah oh wow okay i see a lot of people do it um and soundcloud seems okay with it but i don't know but but also soundcloud i I've, I've uploaded a bunch of stuff that they've pulled in the past few months and they just pull it they don't give strikes really oh shit. yeah man. like i got i do so many blends things of mixes take them down but it just says no strike you don't own this but they don't give you the strike i don't know if that's just my account or maybe what, it's because i posted a mix that had the beatles and drake no i'm just kidding <laughs> that's true mixed together <laughs> mixed together <laughs> Um, um dope all right well and everybody can find you online at zomano that's it z-o-m-a-n-n-o please send me some messages i got some yeah. free time <laughs> hit him hit him he's got lots of free time hit him on uh, instagram twitter all not that. twitch yet right you got dumbfounded is the uh, twitch. Yeah. well i have a twitch but i'm not active on it but okay too. who knows we'll soon enough journey i'm takes. sure if they follow your instagram the old post everything yeah send, there. send me messages on there yeah <laughs> Dope. You got anything else you want to tell the people or up and coming DJs uh, advice for them or anything? Tell any advice for up and coming DJs. Uh, I do have advice. This is from my boy Anrev in Singapore and uh, he's part of DJ city team also. And he was, he asked a question to our, our tour manager out. One of my tour managers out there my close friend Toshi about how to, you know, start beca- to DJ internationally, DJ more places, um, you know, and I, I couldn't think of the answer at that time, but I, I've been thinking about it and you just really, you, you have to get it popping in your own city first. For me, the, how I was able to go into Vegas and go into international is because, um, you know, I, I, I put on for Koreatown for a long time. I helped did yep. my party in Koreatown. And I think a lot of, um, other DJs, they, they want to ho- just hop into it, but you should start in your own city, start with your own party, have it pop in, and then you're going to get the recognition and be able to tour or, or, and rev you're coming up for it. Win the title, bro. That title, you can win that title for the, uh, what is he in uh, the Red Bull? So, yeah, that's true. So that's the one way you could fast track it, but you know, that's what I would say. Just put on for your city. Right. But even I feel like everyone that has won a three style, has not fast tracked anything, you know, like yeah. they're all some of the dopest DJs that have worked for 10 to 20 years to get to that point from four color sacks to Jay Espinosa's. Yeah. Um, but in a way it fast tracks you to be worldwide. But, but I think, you know, that's, uh, I think getting it popping in your own city is it, you have to pay the dues yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And that was directed to you, and Rev. It was just was uh, inspired. So. <laughs> so. Inspired by you. So you're inspirational. <laughs> yeah. All right, dope. Well, yo, DJ Zo, Zo Mano, thank you so much for coming on the 20 yeah. podcast. Appreciate I really it, appreciate it. Yeah. We had some amazing stories. We had some insightful things. We had the quarantine quiz. I'm this gonna, is by two showers now. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna lower the shower amount after this? No, two per day. <laughs> oh, you're gonna up it. <laughs> Damn, take it to the seven. Who's hitting seven showers a week right now? I don't Whoa, think anybody. Achievers, you. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck's wrong with you? Um, all right, this is also the longest podcast we've ever done, so I think that's a good sign. Thank you so um, much, Spider. Sorry we went long, guys. <laughs> 
Yeah, sorry to the editors, which is me. But um, yo, thank you so much. And shout to everyone, everyone that helps us out. Shout to Anthony, shout to Vlats, shout to Edward, shout to Quickie, shout to everyone at DJ City and Beat Source. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Beat Source is the team and DJ City. Um, and the 20 podcast is produced by Beat Source and me and those guys I just named. Um, join us next week for interviews as we discuss music that matters to DJs and all types of shit, just like we did today all right dj zo on the 20 podcast thank you 